And uh, we're going to cover all of that on the program. If you're new, this is where MAGA comes to talk. You will love this program if you are new here. So make sure that you subscribe. Here we go. It sure is. Oh, man. Welcome, everyone. I'm Brian Craig. You are listening to Florida's longest-running radio show. Indeed, you are. The Steve Kane Show. On the radio since 1977, celebrating 47 years on the radio. And, uh, you know, big question is, are you tired of winning yet? <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll never disagree with President Trump. I will never criticize President Trump. And President Trump is always, always right. Uh, but I, I will take issue with, but although it was sarcasm on his spar, uh, part, he says, you're going to get sick of winning. I am not sick of winning. And you know what? I bet you are not sick of winning either. You know, what, what President Trump did yesterday was absolutely miraculous. And we're going to talk about what that has to do with the, this, this raid on the homes of P. Diddy, Sean Diddy Combs. Is he going to change his name again? Because there is, uh, there is a connection and some things we're going to talk about involving President Trump and Diddy. Don't worry. But yesterday, it's, a, it's amazing. Letitia James, the most corrupt attorney general of any state, probably in the history of the union, uh, gets together with this corrupt judge in Goron, and Trump was supposed to pay half a billion dollars almost yesterday, half a billion dollars to Letitia. Trump goes into court, gets, gets it reduced 60% to $174 million, which he has in his back pocket. He said he had the half a billion dollars in cash lying around. He had the $174 million in his back pocket. And then what happens? He all, not, not only did he get this, this obscene, unjust uh, bond against him reduced by 60%, he made $1 billion just yesterday. $1 billion with a B dollars just yesterday, President Trump. So no, I and you and he and MAGA, we are not sick of winning. Um, this... I want to talk, though, here in the beginning and get your thoughts on this. If you're on hold, stand by. We'll get to the phones in a bit at one 465 2631 So these raids on uh, Sean P. Diddy Combs, whatever his name is these days, versus the raid on Trump's home at Mar-a-Lago. What a difference, Right. P. Diddy here, he's get, he gets his house in L.A. and his house in Miami raided. And then it's reported, and let me read this. This is um, very strange. TMZ, TMZ is reporting that Diddy's private jet, Love Air LLC. Oh, boy, what a name. You know, you got all these creeper accusations against you, and you call your... Private Jet Love Air? That seems really creepy, man. TMZ reports that Diddy's private Love Air LLC jet was spotted in Antigua. Some users on social media are saying that Diddy could escape to Africa. But there's been no confirmation of his presence on the plane, this big raid. And um, yesterday, after the raid, it was very bizarre. Sean Diddy Combs, after his homes in Miami and L.A. were raided by the feds yesterday afternoon, in connection with a sex trafficking investigation, the raids follow accusations by five individuals against Sean Diddy Combs. Um, and people are asking, has he left the United States with his private jet? which has been spotted on the ground in the Caribbean. He was seen at an airport pacing around like a lunatic yesterday. People arrested at his home. Were those, his ki were those Diddy's kids that were arrested at his home? Look at the... And, and here's the thing you got to look at with these things. 
Diddy's houses get raided and then Trump's house gets raided. Look at the difference, right? Got people handcuffed in front of Diddy's house. You got Diddy walking around the airport freaking out. His private jet spotted here, there, everywhere, in other countries and all this stuff. Trump's house gets raided and what happens? Tr no one's in handcuffs. <laughs> Believe me, they'd love to put people in handcuffs. They, they toss President Trump's entire private home. They go through his son Barron's room and toss the room. They go through President Trump's private office. They go through Melania's underwear drawer and closet and toss that. They bring a safe cracker to break into his safe. They start throwing stuff from his private office all over the floor. And what happens that very day? Eric Trump, President Trump, one of his sons, Eric Trump, is on television immediately going after the feds, going after the prosecutor, going after everyone involved. President Trump's doing the same thing. So why is it when Diddy's house gets raided, people are in handcuffs, and he's wandering around an airport, around a private jet, getting all weird. But President Trump and his family take on the forces that raided them. And, you know, th this is a, you, you saw this yesterday with President Trump when he came out of the, the courtroom. He's got these re obscene cases against him, this Stormy Daniels business. Here you got Alvin Bragg, a local district attorney who's trying to bring federal charges against President Trump of campaign finance rules, which are not even in his jurisdiction. You know, you can't, you can't prosecute people for crimes that are not under your jurisdiction. I mean, what, what is that about? I know the media don't want you to know that, but that's what's going on. But look at what Trump did yesterday. On top of making $1 billion, that was at the end of the day. After everything, he made a billion dollars at the end of the day yesterday. Just yesterday. <laughs> but, um, you know, he, uh, President Trump got the fine reduced 60% and he came out and talked to the press. And what, what does he do? He attacks the judge, is. He attacks the prosecutors. He attacks the attorney general. He attacks people making the accusation. When have you seen something like this happen. You know, when, when there are high profile court cases, okay, when there's high profile court cases going on, it's not unusual, you know, to see lawyers have a press conference and attack opposing counsel or something. But even they don't attack judges and attorney generals and district attorneys and prosecutors. You don't see that. President Trump comes out and attacks the judges, the lawyers, those making everybody. The reason that President Trump handles things the way he does in these cases, as opposed to Diddy, who's got people in his family and at his house handcuffed and he's wandering around, people, is he going to flee? We don't know. President Trump has nothing to hide. Now, I don't know what about the story with Diddy. I don't follow entertainment news. I'm too busy following President Trump, who's trying to save the United States of America and Western civilization as we know it, to be concerned with uh, entertainers, all right? So in America, you are innocent until proven guilty in a court of law by a jury of your peers, unless your name is Trump, and then all of us, they decide you're guilty in the beginning and bring like all 10 cases against you with no evidence and no victims. So I don't know if uh, Diddy is guilty or not of the things that he's being accused of. Time will tell. But I can tell the difference between the reaction of Diddy versus Trump. And Diddy's reaction is someone that's got something to hide. Now, it may not be related to these charges. I don't know. Maybe something else. But President Trump has nothing to hide. He knows you go through his house, his drawers, his desk, his safe, his closet, his underwear drawer. There's nothing in there that's wrong, that's illegal, that's questionable because President Trump 
is a squeaky clean Marine. He may have committed some minor traffic violations when he was driving his Lambo around Palm Beach before he was president and something like that. Maybe made a rolling stop at a stop sign in Palm Beach. Maybe put the pedal to the metal here and there. I don't even know that he did that. I just know that if I was driving a Lamborghini, I'd, I'd, I would do all that. But I'm not Trump. So y y you see the difference between a man who is a completely innocent man of any wrongdoing of, of anything other than making America great again. Now, I understand liberals do believe that making America great again is some type of federal crime and all. I get it. It's not. But they think it is or should be. But P. Diddy is running around like criminals run around that are accused of things, scared to death. Where Trump is out, this damn judge, I didn't do anything, this judge, how dare he, he's corrupt. This, this prosecutor, this attorney general. It's, it's amazing. You've never seen someone respond to charges and trials and court cases like Donald Trump. Because, you know what? Even though you're innocent until proven guilty in a court of law, 99% of people that are in courts are guilty. Trump's that 1% that's not. But watch the two of them. Now, if you're on hold, stand by. We're going to take our first break of this Tuesday morning edition of Florida's longest running radio show. That's right, the Steve Kane Show on the radio since 1977. Celebrating 47 years on the radio, my name is Brian Craig, and our number is toll-free, 1-888-465-2631. 888-465-2631. It's a toll-free call no matter where you are listening to us. We'll be right back after this. I got to go in the other room. And turn the air conditioning on. It is really hot in here. Oh man, welcome. If you're new, make sure that you subscribe. And everyone else is already sub. Please like the video. That helps so much, guys. Absolutely. Where am I? Oh, yeah, we got a lot to cover today. We've got a lot to cover. I'm going to get to everything. We're here till nine.
Have you put off buying new tires because you thought they were too expensive? Buy friendly prices at Friendly Tire and Margate on both new and used tires. New tires as low as $70 a tire. That's out the door and on the road because Friendly Tire doesn't charge you to balance the tire or mount the tire. They have thousands of used tires in stock too, starting at just $30. Call for a quote right over the phone. 9 All right, callers on hold, stand by. I'm Brian. It's the Steve Kane Show. Okay, um, this bridge collapse in Baltimore, it's not the key bridge. It's the Francis Scott key bridge. Why are they dropping Francis Scott off the name of the bridge in all the news? You're supposed to be ashamed of him. He wrote our great star-spangled banner, the anthem of our great country. Um, so this Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore has collapsed. A column was hit by a ship, a big old ship. Uh, this is from the Baltimore Sun. Baltimore's Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsed early this morning after a support column was struck by a vessel sending cars and at least one tractor trailer into the river and prompting the governor to declare a state of emergency. You know, um, when I was a, a kid, we had a, uh, an incident like this in Florida. I've talked about this because it, it's in Tampa and it terrifies me. Um, the Skyway Bridge in Tampa was hit by a freighter. A column was hit. And half the bridge collapsed, and that bridge in Tampa, I went, I went over that bridge after it got hit, when half the bridge was gone. They only had half a bridge left. They let, and that bridge, the top of it, was covered by cloud cover. It was so high. They have a new bridge that they've built to replace it. It's not the same bridge that got hit in Tampa years ago. But these things do happen. However... Um, I think the media, I understand they got video and we saw a ship hit it, but the media are immediately calling this an accident. I don't know. After, after what happened in, in Russia over the weekend and, you know, with all these terrorists that are pouring across the southern border, how they can just declare this an accident so quickly uh, is insane. Uh, the entire bridge collapsed into the river, says the Director of Com uh, Communications for the Baltimore Fire Department. We have reason to believe that there were vehicles and possibly a tractor trailer that went into the water. Uh, authorities uh, say they're searching for at least seven people in the water as of 3 a.m., so that's almost three and a half hours ago. The number of vehicles that may have been impacted or traveling on the bridge is unknown. The fire Department spokesman said they've declared a state of emergency. Um, I, I think the media are declaring this an accident way too early, way too early with everything that's going on. But, you know, um, this, this bridge, the Francis Scott Key Bridge, not the Key Bridge. I'm sure they call it the Key Bridge in Baltimore because it's short, but uh, I think it's important for us to call it the Francis Scott Key Bridge. I'd like some investigations to know who was on the uh, on that ship, who was who was piloting that ship when it hit. Hopefully, we'll have some information soon. Was the ship hijacked? I don't know, but I know the media. They're not interested in asking questions or investigating. They just want to get a narrative going or not going. It was an accident. Well, let's hope it was an accident. Let's hope that it was. Um, you know, I wish it didn't happen at all, but. It did happen. We can't stop that. Let's hope that it was an accident. Now, with all that being said, um, how long is it going to be before the Democrats and Black Lives Matter, you know, and all these other radical liberals uh, start telling us um, what a bad name it is, Francis Scott Keeping? You know, BLM started with this bizarre uh, statement a few years back, that the Star-Spangled ba Banner, which was written by 
Francis Sky Key is a racist song. And you go through the song, where's the, the, the about race? And then they have this thing, well, if you read the fifth stanza of Francis Scott Key's poem, which I mean, I might pull it up in, in a bit. I don't, I don't, nobody reads the fifth stanza. That's not part of the song. Francis Scott Key's poem, part of it was turned into our national anthem. But this part that nobody sings or knows about, I even got to Google it to remember what it is. It's been so long, makes the national anthem racist. Give me a break. But this bridge will be rebuilt, and um, it, it, it may be as soon as today that leftist activists start telling us that it should be renamed something because Francis Scott Key was racist. Um, I don't know if Francis Scott Key was racist or not. It doesn't matter. You know, you, you, we're not going to judge these long dead people based on the standard. If you, if you base everybody in the past on the standards of today, everyone uh, was racist or sexist or some something, okay? Because things change, <laughs> okay? But I do know this, that um, our flag was still there, man, and that's a good... I know that they don't like our flag. They don't like our country. They hate it. But uh, yeah, over the years when I was younger, people said, oh, the national anthem should be America the Beautiful, you know, and things like this. And, and I used to kind of think that and as I've grown older, I realize that the Star Spangled Banner is the perfect song for our national anthem because through all this crap that the Democrats put us through, our flag is still there. Whether it's the Democrat insurrection against the federal government that's known as the American Civil War, that's an inaccurate and misleading name for that war. It, the, the Civil War's actual name is the Democrat insurrection against the federal government. Our flag still flew after that. Okay? And I, and I understand that, that Joe Biden is trying to replace the population of this country with the entire population of South America. I get that. But our flag is still there. The leader of the political opposition in this country, Donald John Trump, they're trying to take his money, take his property. They've arrested him multiple times. They've got mug shots. They want to put him in jail. Our flag is still there. So I, I think Francis Scott Key is a great American, and his poem that was turned into our national anthem is the perfect anthem for this nation. But they want to wipe out this nation as we know it. Now, if you're on hold, stand by. We're going to take our break for the bottom of the hour. I will go to the phones after the break, all right? A few things we had to cover there in the first couple of segments. So if you're on hold, hang in there. I will take the calls in the order in which they were received when we get back from the break. If you'd like to call in, please do. It's a toll-free call no matter where you are listening. It's one 465 2631 I'm Brian Craig. It's the Steve Kane Show. Back after this. Make sure you guys subscribe that, that are new to the program. And everyone else, please like the video if you don't mind. It helps grow the channel. Oh, man, oh, man. Oh, what a day. I, um, you guys, did you, any of you watch my live stream this morning? You know, and um, I left the house, the, and and I realized I left uh, I left our cat Luna on the back porch. We got a screen. Our back porch is screened in, but we don't like to leave her out there. So I went back home to let her in. 
I didn't want to call my wife and wake her up. So I went back home to let her in. So I literally walked in a lot. I don't know how I made it here on time. I was afraid I wasn't going to make it, <clears throat> but I'm here. Oh, yeah, Luna loves to be on YouTube. Yeah, do you guys enjoy those uh, more casual streams? I am renovating <coughs> my uh, studio room at home to set up a, um, a uh, you know, I have my really nice studio where I, you know, that you see me do on the weekends sometimes where I show the news articles. I'm, I'm setting up. Uh, yeah, I'm redoing that entire room. I'll still have that studio, but I'm setting up a second studio for podcasting. <clears throat> like a sit-down studio as well. Oh yeah, Luna's great. We've had her almost a year. She loves our screened-in back porch. Now, why do you think when Trump's house gets gets raided, he's he uh, goes out and confronts those who did the raiding, the prosecutors, the feds, the judges, everybody, but Diddy gets raided, and um, his location is unknown. Why do you think that? Why do you think the reactions when they get raided is so different? Oh. Sarah sent some nice Easter cards to me and my family and to, I see her in the chat, and to Steve. And, uh, yeah, just got him this morning here at the radio station. Thank you, Sarah. Nice cards. May the Lord bless you. See you all soon. Can't wait. Love, Sarah. And Zadie, my cat. Thank you, Sarah. Let me see the Star Spangled Banner Racist Fifth Stanza. What does it say? Let me see if I can find that part. Let me see if I can find it. All right, and don't forget, free shipping continues with our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E, at MyPillow.com, site-wide, plus you get the special deals, so that's an amazing. Promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E, free shipping on everything, no matter how large, no matter how small, no matter how light, no matter how heavy. All right, so um, Trump's house gets raided, Diddy's houses get raided, different reactions from Diddy and Trump. Why did uh, uh, Trump and his family get confrontational with authorities? And did he? They don't even know where he is. He may have fled. Why the difference in reactions? All right, let's let's uh, take your calls. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hello. Yes, you're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? My name's Mark. I'm from Deerfield Beach. <clears throat> Been here my whole life. I've never seen a president ever treated with such disrespect from the time he came in office. And I've been watching this for a long time. And these are not court, court cases. These, these are hate crimes they're doing against the president. And, 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 the, and, the, and you're, you're talking about President Trump, of course, and the American people. Yes. He, he, no one's ever cared about the American people like Donald Trump has ever in my life. I mean, think about it. They broke, they broke into a home of a president of the United States 
and went through the underwear drawer and closet of the first lady and 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 also tossed his his teenage son's room what's that about these people should be charged with treason by going above and beyond the law and i am just sick of it i, I just can't believe what's been going on for the last seven years well but look at what happened yesterday trump had huge victories all day long the appeals court is obviously on his side in this Letitia James case. And at the end of the day, he made $1 billion yesterday on one business deal. Things seem to be going well for Trump and us. Well, here, here's another problem. I have customers. I do air conditioning. And uh, I try not to mention politics because you mentioned Trump. And they flip out mm -hmm. like they've been eating. Really? this fake news of, oh, I would never vote for that man. I said, look, Joe Biden's a pervert and a communist. I vote yes. for socialism. Correct. And it's just like, these people, I, they need to be educated, but I can't do it to my customers. Mm. If I might, I might lose my, some of my business. They would, they, would rather, they would rather be hot in the Florida heat than have uh, MAGA AC in repair, I guess. Uh, well, they would just pay... Uh, 30% more by calling another company. Oh, yeah. But, un unbelievable. Um, anyway, that's all I wanted to say. These people should be charged with hate crimes for what they're trying to do to Mr. Trump. Well, if you, if you, if you have such good deals on your AC work, you should me message me on Twitter or something because I'm just getting time for my annual servicing of my AC. That 30% less sounds pretty good, but you got to reach out to me. Um, I'm not on Twitter. I'm on Facebook. But. Uh, you can send me a DM on my Facebook group, Brian Craig Show. You can find it. I'll call you. Or my wife will call you. One of us. All right, I appreciate it. Yeah, I'll take it. If he's good, we'll talk about him on the air. Yeah. You got to get your... I get. We get our air conditioning service usually twice a year. Sometimes once a year. I kind of lost track this last time. Cause keep your, you keep your AC service. It'll last you a long time. And AC is life in Florida. I mean, we have it on pretty much every day of the year. In Florida, we have our AC on. That's the way it is. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Yeah, good morning, Brent. Oh, Richie the bus driver. What's up? It's a, it's, a, it's a great day in America, but I called you for a reason, because you have that two-core rule, and it has to do with what happened yesterday with President Trump. Uh, well, no, that's a continuation of today, because we're, we're talking about that today still. You had a phone call from an out-of-control lawyer who's so angry he can't think straight. He thinks because he's an attorney that the common person like you or myself, that's Greg DeSantis too. He thinks that the the average the average person isn't as smart as an attorney. We were being facetious about pennies and sending uh, truck uh, sending Wells Fargo trucks in front of in front of City Hall. That was being facetious. Greg too, when you buy a house everything is done electronically transferred. You don't walk into a bank with all that money. Mm. And that you're, you're a total moron, Greg, too. I have to let people know that. And he asked, he, his question was, how come President Trump didn't do it silently a week before doing it that way instead of making such a big deal out of it? Well, the reason is, Greg, too, nobody wants to cover his, cover President Trump. The only coverage he gets is negative. So he, he t turns it around and he uses it for himself and he forces CNN and them. Yeah. That's what work out for them. It's egg on their face. Mm -hmm. At that point, he's getting the best best commercials possible, better than his rallies, because the people, the average person is seeing what they're doing. And it's well, look, look what look what happened yesterday. He he went into court and got a sixty percent discount on the bond from the appeals court. I mean, that's that's beautiful. You know, it's so. It, this is a weird thing about that yesterday. Because it went from half a billion to 174 million, it makes 174 million not sound like a lot of money, you know. And he's got that he's got that money in his pocket, Trump. And I mean, what 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 happened yesterday was amazing. And he knew. I, I listen. This Trump miracle is not an accident. There there is divine intervention, you know. Um, you know, this country was 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 founded on on religious freedom. OK, and this is the only place you truly have it in the world, true religious freedom. And there is divine intervention to save this great country, because without this country and the form in which it was founded, you don't have freedom of anything on this planet. And um, yeah. 
I have your direct direct quote to Greg too, because I hope he calls you, okay? Greg too, because you're an attorney. That doesn't mean you're smarter than the average person, and that's what what's wrong with these attorneys. I'm yeah. What? When they go to law school, they come out and they call us the common layman. They automatically they got a swollen head. Sometimes lawyers are kind of stupid too. And he's so angry, he's he's become he's become stupid. I mean, totally stupid. I would never use him as an attorney. He, uh, I don't know, I don't know what kind of I don't know what kind of attorney he is, but I know this: what President Trump did yesterday was masterful. And obviously, the appeals court is 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 on his side. And, and then, when not only did he get the uh, bond cut by 60%, he made a billion dollars in one business deal yesterday. It's crazy. The last thing is, Greg Duke called you and said, you're out of control and so is Richie out of control. Oh, I didn't hear that part. I missed that part. Oh, that, yeah, yeah. He said that's how we started this phone call. You, you and Richie are out of control. Well, guess what, Greg, too? You're out of control. You're a, you're a lawyer, but you're not such a smart one. You've actually, you're, basically, lawyers have screwed this country totally up. And, and, I, and, you know, I'll tell you this. In my, uh, yeah, they, that's true, Congress are almost all lawyers. But, you know, the, 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 the dumbest people I've ever known in my life are college educated. And the smartest people I've ever known are people that have high school diplomas or maybe not even that. Well, that's what's wrong with Washington D.C. because they're all they're all book learned idiots up there. And that's right. On the rest of the country, I mean, the rest of the country. Look at look at look at the Rush Limbaugh didn't didn't have a college degree. No, no, and he was pretty darn smart. That's right. Before you before you call Brian up again and say we're out of control, I think we're right, and and you're so angry about everything that's happened. I used to have sympathy for him, but I don't anymore. You start attacking callers, then you start attacking Brian. I don't like so, so why do you? So, so this this question I have today: Trump's house gets raided. His reaction and his, and 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 well, let me and then and Diddy's house gets raided, and he's like flying around. What's the why the difference? <laughs> well, the difference is one is guilty and one is one is not. And when one gets mm. out there on camera and defends his honor and himself, it's obvious as hell. And they and then and all the Democrats say is. Well, he's trying to, he's, he's saying this, and he's outrageously defending his corruption. I'm so tired about hearing about 34 indictments, all Democrat indictments, all Democrat, everything is Democrat against them. There's not one Republican, okay? That's the bottom line here. It's a kangaroo, kangaroo garbage. And this guy is just going... But, but, but you know what, though? Tr we, we are winning. Trump is winning. We are winning. And, and who would have thought three and a half years ago we would be where we are right now? No, the polls probably went up for Trump yesterday. I'm telling you, it's egg on their face. And they had to, they had to show it on CNN and NBC. Mm -hmm. In lawn chairs, in the cold weather, of course, in the courthouse. That's right. Sort of like Greg, sort of like Greg too, a little kitty about it. I'm, I'm really just going on after him. I hope he calls you back. Eh, maybe we'll see. Give him, give him a left. Well, no, no, no. When some when somebody challenges me to hang up on them, I got to do it. I can't, you know, I can't uh, do that. But I appreciate the call, Richie. Richie is uh, filled with some passion today. Now, before we break, I want to tell you guys about Joe Thomas. You know, Joe Thomas is amazing. He's our retirement expert here at True Oldies, and he's offering free phone consultations. No matter where you're located in America, by the way, he's offering free phone consultations. And, you know, when, when you hear me talk to Joe Thomas, I talk about, you know, me, like what I'm thinking, you know, extra revenue stream, my money's protected. That's all great stuff ha with, with these annuities. You got extra money coming in, a guaranteed revenue stream when you're retired. Your money's not at risk like it is in the stock market. That's, 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 but, you know, maybe you've got different needs. Maybe you have different goals in your retirement. Everybody's situation is unique. So when you call Jupiter Joe Thomas, you tell him, your situation, he's going to give you his over 30 years of experience in the retirement industry. He's going to give you his expert advice based on your unique situation. Give him a call. Uh, his number is 561-743-0999. 561-743-0999. That's Joe Thomas. If you missed that number, just go to jupiterjoe.com. All right, Jupiter Joe. Dot com. We'll take our last break of the first hour already. Can you believe it? And be back after this. The cold.
All right, here we go. I'm going to go back to the phones when we get back. Could they have caught him if they wanted? It's it's um it's hard to say because government workers are so incompetent. All right, welcome back. Calls on hold, stand by. I was talking to Tom Laporta from Laporta Contracting during the break. We were texting, and uh, I was telling him, I said, my, my last AC guy, he came to service the AC. He told me he cleaned the coils, and he didn't. Of course, he charged me for it, and then I found out he didn't, so it's hard. I, I need to find, like, the Tom Laporta of AC repair and servicing, which, you know, because, you know, Tom Laporta will never sell you a roof you do not need. And, you know, it's, before we know it, it it's, it's like rainy season again. You know, uh, if you have a wet spot on your ceiling, you got a leak in your roof. You want to call Tom Laporta at Laporta Contracting. You know, he covers the entire state of Florida, the East Coast and the West Coast, everywhere in between. He works on every type of structure from single-family homes to HOAs, condominiums, uh, municipal buildings, churches, any kind of structure. That's right. And uh, he'll never sell you a roof you do not need. He did incredible work at Steve's house. His number, and this number rings directly to Tom Laporta's cell phone, 954-604-4602. 954-604-4602. And online, LaportaContracting.com. All right, the phones are very busy today. We'll, uh, we got two openings on the board at one 465 2631 All right, let's go. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey there, my name is Dr. Rabbi Yoram. Dr. Rabbi, I, the last part you cut out on. You're a doctor and a rabbi. Yeah, the, the doctor's not as important. Okay, a lot of schooling there. Do, do, you, do people call you doctor or rabbi? What do you like to go by? Yeah, I so like, because I believe, you know, I make more of a contribution to the world. Yes. The degrees are academic, so, you know, spinning wheels up. Agreed. So what's on your mind this morning, Rabbi? Yeah, I guess two things. The first thing is in Yeshiva, they always reference uh, something from the Talmud that says that if we were to randomly pick out anyone from our community, a hundred members, they would do much better politically than all the politics hacks. Have. No doubt about that. No doubt about that. Yeah. Random. Obviously, I'm concerned about Israel. It's, uh, some, it's the forefront of my mind. My mother's Israeli, and uh, it's very near and dear to me. And I, I feel like I'm, I'm part of my soul has been ripped out. As a well, let me, you know, let me tell you, you know, um, I don't worry about Israel because the Jews have been going through this since there were Jews, and, and the Jews will get through this and survive, although it's god-awful what happened in that barbaric rape horde of barbarians that hit the music festival. I'm really concerned, though, about this incredibly huge amount of anti-Semitism in this country from not just the typical people, but even conservatives like Candace Owens and others. There, and the, the, uh, the millennial generation in this country have no understanding of the situation with Israel. And they don't even know they're anti-Semitic. They've been brainwashed. Well, I face it. Uh, every time I walk out the house, you know, I represent every Jew that's ever lived or ever will live. You know, I have a Jewish appearance, I have a beard, I wear a yarmulke, I have sisters, so I get questions all the time, but 
frankly, I can always tell the difference between a conservative and a liberal because when a liberal sees me, they look away or they look down or they look uncomfortable. But when I see a conservative guy, typically has a cross on, he walks right up to me with the biggest smile and says he loves me. So, yeah. So you're, you, you must be orthodox. Yes. See, you know, in, for people that don't know, typically, you know, Orthodox Jews are conservative, uh, Reformed Jews are liberal, and they're not really religious. Um, in fact, some of the leading anti-Israeli voices, like Schumer, are Reformed Jews. And it's, it's really a sad thing. But, you know, I'll tell you, you know, there's, there's, anti there's always been anti-Semitism in this country, but not at the levels we have it. You know, this um, anti-Semite at Harvard that said it's okay to advocate for the extermination of Jews so long as you don't do it. Gay, remember? You know, they were going to fire her after the pressure. Obama saved her job. She's still working at Harvard, making almost a million dollars a year. You know, there's, there, there's a real problem in this country with anti-Semitism. So I've uh, been writing research on this subject. I'm a college professor for 20 years at a local university, and... My experience has been is that uh, the anti-Israel sentiment is a way to be anti-Semitic. Ellie Weissel said anti-Zionism is anti-Semitism, but it's shrouded. In yeah, that's correct. So I faced that, and uh, as a matter of fact, the university that I worked for for many years has big signs all over the place saying equality, religious tolerance, acceptance of all faiths, acceptance of all sexual orientations, but there should be an asterisk, unless you have a Jewish appearance. Yeah. Well, you know, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what that's about, okay? People are not around, you know, re, uh, Orthodox Jews, mo a lot of them look like rabbis, okay? You know, you know, especially on Saturdays and Fridays. But people are, ju it's, it's just like uh, people aren't accustomed to seeing people walk around dress like that all the time. It's just like people get that way around Muslims that are wearing traditional garb or, or, or something. I, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't be, I, I wouldn't uh, assume like uh, Jerry Seinfeld's uncle that it's all anti-Semitism. But uh, when people see you around with the, with the beard and the yarmulke and the 1800s clothes and, and what are those things that hang out of your pockets called? I forgot. You're like, what is that? Yeah. And they represent the commandments on the... Yeah. So, so people are like, what's that all about? You understand what I mean? So I wouldn't be so sure it's, uh, and I said, hey, uh, Dr. Rabbi, good to hear from you, and uh, thanks for the call, all right? All right, let's go. Let's see, where are we next? Let's go. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? This is Michael Louisiana. Oh, hey, Michael. <clears throat> yeah, I never get tired of winning. I'm a, I'm a big sports fan. I never get tired of winning. So let, me, so let me ask you this, okay? President Trump's home gets raided and tossed by the feds, and uh, be, while it's still going on, I turn on television and Eric Trump's on TV calling out the government for doing this. President Trump's on TV calling out the government for doing this. Uh, P. Diddy, he gets his houses raided, and I keep hearing stories that his plane spotted in the Caribbean. Why the different reaction between Diddy and Trump when their homes get raided by the federal government? You gotta understand that Diddy comes from that era in rap music called the uh, gangster rap. And a lot of those gangster rappers, uh, a number of those gangster rappers have ended up dead. So. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, to me, to me, one guy is a totally squeaky clean Marine with nothing to hide, and the other guy is worried about what they might find. He may have, I'm not saying he's guilty of these accusations. I don't know. I haven't followed it. You know, you're innocent until proven guilty in America. You know, in, in a courtroom by a judge, by a jury of your peers, unless your name's Trump, and then, you know, then they, they say you're guilty and you have to prove your innocence. So I don't know. But there's obviously something that he's worried about people finding in there. And, you know, I don't know. Because <laughs> he's, he's not acting like tr Eric Trump and Donald Trump. They weren't acting like this when Mar-a-Lago was raided. No, sir. And I, I tried to find out, I, I tried to find out how much was P. Diddy's house, but I can't. I can't find the exact price, but knowing that he's a big, rich rapper, I would, I would assume it's in the millions of dollars range. Mm -hmm. Somewhere around, somewhere, he lives down there in Miami, so. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I mean, that, that's the thing, you're right, the two different reactions from two, two, two different guys, and, and 
You know, I remember once, uh, you guys will remember this because I talked about it on the air what happened. I stopped off at a gas station at about 3, 3.30 in the morning on the way to the radio station years ago. One of my tires, I ran over something. It was almost flat and the gas station was closed and I stopped to put air on my tire. I got up and there were three cops there. And they were yelling and screaming at me and, you know, what are you doing? Are you back here buying? I'm like, I'm putting air on my tires. I, I had the thing in my hand, right? I just gotten up off my knees from the tire. And one of them was screaming at me and he says, I can search your car. I can search. And I said, please do search my car so I can get to work because I got nothing in my car uh, that, uh, that would get me in trouble, right? You know, and when, so there's different reactions when people are squeaky clean as opposed to people that are not. And, and Trump and Trump's reaction to all the, like yesterday with these press conferences at, and, and, and that he has all the time outside courtrooms where he's attacking judges and attorney generals and stuff. That is the sign of a completely squeaky clean, innocent man. I mean, I, I think he's, I think Trump's going to end up owning New York somehow. Well, then, then New York would get back on track. Yeah, yeah exactly. All right, Mike. Adam Mature, I can tell. Good call. All right, let's go. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, it's Sandra from Boca. How hey, Sandra, what's up? Um, just want to say thank you because I didn't know about that uh, appeal <coughs> that he won, that 60% of the uh, the penalty was decreased. Oh, yeah, it's huge. Yeah. Oh, <coughs> thank you so much. <laughs> He's a pendant. Yeah, I mean, and, and the, the look on his face, there's a, there's a courtroom sketch you know, that I saw, he was just grinning ear to ear. It was beautiful. Yeah, isn't it? <clears throat> <laughs> you know, uh, you know, like you said, when you're talking about divine intervention, he's definitely being helped. You see, there's definitely help from above. Yeah. So why, so maybe you got some answers. So Trump's house gets raided. He and Eric are on TV attacking the government for doing it. P. Diddy's houses get raided and... He's acting very strangely. He's not acting like the Trumps. He's not being confrontational. Why is he acting that way, did he? But Trump is like, hey, how dare you do this? Well, you know, uh, I don't really know much about P. Diddy's life, but I know he's had some... Mm -hmm. There was a gun. I remember there was a... When he was... There was a gun issue in New York with J-Lo, remember? Yeah, remember that? So it's like he's had certain issues in the past. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I actually saw something where President Trump, and they don't show this clip a lot, but I happen to just find it where he's doing a rally, and uh, he said something. He says, I know I'm going to get criticized for this. He goes, but I don't care. He said, somebody came up to me the other day. This is President Trump talking, and he said, somebody said to me, you're the most famous guy in the world. Do you know that? Do you know you're the most famous guy in the world? Mm. And I looked at that guy, and I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. I have a boss. Yeah. He says, I have a boss. That's amazing. It was amazing. It was amazing. Because, you know, you will never, ever hear that come out of anybody's mouth. And he didn't care. Listen, I'm late. I'm, I, I am late for the break, but uh, good points. Thank you for the call. We'll be right back. WSFS 104.3 HD3 Miramar. <coughs> WIRK 103.1 HD3 Indian Town. And her in Broward on 96.9 FM. All right, where are we?
All right, where am I? If you're on hold, hang in there. We'll get to the phones in a few minutes. Oh, that dementia research. Is that for Joe? Alrighty now, we are back. I'm Brian Craig. It's the Steve Kane Radio Show. Flo Rida's longest running radio show. If you're on hold, stand by. We'll go to the calls momentarily. Just a couple of things. Um, this god-awful bridge collapse in Baltimore, the Francis Scott Key Bridge, hit by a ship and collapsed with people on it in the middle of the night. How long until we hear leftists say that the bridge should be rebuilt and renamed because Francis Scott Key and Star Spangled Banner are racist? I don't know. But I think the media are too quick to determine that this was an accident. I mean, it's like when Andrew Breitbart died. They declared the cause of death before an autopsy. Uh, they just too, too quick to call it an accident with what happened in Russia and what's going on at the southern border. And also, we're talking about a tale of two raids. Donald Trump's house is raided here in Florida. Eric Trump, the morning of the raid, is on television attacking the government for doing it. Donald Trump's doing it. Family's doing it. Diddy's houses get raided. Well, I'm seeing a different type of reaction. So why is Diddy's reaction? There some reports that his plane, his private plane, has been spotted in Antigua. TMZ reported that. I don't know. But why is D Diddy acting this one way and President Trump was acting the other? Let's go. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Good morning. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Once, twice, three times, and oh, I was just hanging up. Yes, you're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, Brian. This is Debbie from Palm Coast. Hey. I just have, I just have a couple things to uh, say to you. Um, I don't worry about Trump at all. I love Trump, and he's he, we won. There's no doubt about it in my mind. Mm -hmm. The Francis Bridge, I think for sure that was weakened for that ship to hit, because why in the heck were the media there to get pictures of it happening? It's just bizarre. And thirdly, will you please take your sweet little puppy to Dr. Appleton and see if he can't help her arthritis? Uh, oh, my, oh, my dog. I don't know if Dr. Dr. Appleton is, uh, treats people, not pets, but my dog, Nina, is doing much, much better, I must say. Uh, her, we, we, had to dis we had to elect not to do the cancer surgery because they, the doctor said they'd have to remove basically her entire lower mouth. Um, and at seven, I don't want her to spend her last days like that, but she's doing much better. Thanks for asking and bringing her up. I appreciate the call. All right, take care. I appreciate it. Well, you know, this thing about the bridge collapse, I don't know what happened. I've seen the video and the pictures of the ship, and this does happen. We had that happen here in Florida with the Skyway Bridge, okay? But the, the press are too quick to declare it anything other than terror. They want to immediately say it was an accident. And they, I remember when the Boston bombing happened, 
And uh, Shepard Smith was on Fox then. Remember him? What an idiot he was, huh? He used to be good. He was a local reporter in Miami for years, and he was good. And he was good on Fox for years. And then he got that Trump derangement syndrome, and he destroyed his career. Uh, Shepard Smith. But when the uh, Boston bombing happened, Shepard Smith and many others spent the whole afternoon trying to tell us it was anything other than terrorism. And uh, I remember Shepard Smith saying, well, you know, in Boston, the, um, the uh, electrical stations, they're not at the top of the poles, they're at the bottom at the street, and that looked like an explosion of some type of uh, the, the, the electrical system there, some type of accident. Remember that? And then when they found photographs from a street camera of the Zarnef brothers, the terrorists that blew up the Boston Marathon, uh, they thought they were white. They didn't know they were Muslim yet, you know. And when they and, and I remember the press in Boston had a press conference. They were so giddy that they thought, look, white guys! They practically said that. Um, when Major Nadal Hassan shot up Fort Hood, it took them like eight hours to tell us who did it, even though the media knew, because they wanted it to sound like a... I know this is, I don't like to say it this way, but a, st a, a standard mass shooting as opposed to a terrorist attack. So when there have been terrorist attacks in the post 9-11 era, the media um, want to do everything they can do other than tell you it was a terrorist attack. Now, I'm not saying that's what happened in Baltimore. Ships do collide with bridges. There are ship accidents, you know, and we don't know. But I, but I do know this, the media are rushing to a conclusion way too early uh, because of this ISIS attack in Russia and the Hamas and others that have been found at the southern border. Everyone's mind goes to terror. I, I hope it was just a terrible accident and not terrorist. I don't want it to be that. But the media, you know, when you're reporting the news, they, they, they got a narrative they want to, you know, promote. And they don't want you to think that it was Islamic terrorism, even when it was, like in the Boston Marathon bombing. All right, back to our phones. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Good morning, conservative Doug. Hey, hey Doug. Uh, by the way, Doug, I, I did text you and gave you my cell phone number yesterday. Uh, that's one of the things I have to ask you. What happened is when you sent it to me, for some reason the last number didn't come out. So if you don't mind, send it again because it, it, it Text you should be able you should be able to text me back. I tried and it's oh my goodness. I realize that there's one number missing. First, first, first off, it is insane that uh, someone like me would give their cell phone number to listeners because that's crazy. And I did it, and you're still not happy. Okay, I'll do it. I'll do it right now while you're talking. Okay. I know. Anyway, well, that's the next thing. The first thing is. You know, this judge is fantastic that he reduced the fine, but what took so long, man? You know, it's like if, if, if an off-duty cop, if he sees a crime, he's, he's able to do something. Why, is, why do the judges wait so damn long? It's ridiculous. That judge should have reduced that fine as soon as he heard it. Mm -hmm. Well, they, though, they, they went to, they, you know, you got to get hearings scheduled, the appeals court. I know I take, I take that as a positive, and I, and I would say that's an indicator that the appeals court is on Trump's side. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Without a doubt. I mean, it, it, 170 is, is not that much for, for President Trump, but it's still a lot of money. And, and anyway. Yeah, but it, $174 million is a lot of money to most people. Um, to President Trump, it's pocket money, I guess. It's, and it's a lot less than that half a billion they wanted. That's for sure. I mean, that, that was really insulting. And, uh, and, and I like to say that that woman is doing anything she can to destroy the Constitution. Uh, because uh, uh, mm -hmm. men, men said you can't do it, and she did it anyway. That's right. She, she, she's really evil, that woman. Sure is. The difference, is, the difference between the Trump raid and uh, uh, the other guy's raid is that one came directly from Biden, so that there was a big difference there. Biden was tough. Well, there, uh, what I'm talking more, not differences in the raids, the differences in the reaction between Diddy and Trump. Oh, yeah. Uh, 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 big, there's a, there's a big, you know, like those, uh, I, I heard reported those guys handcuffed were Diddy's sons? I don't know. And he's wandering around the airport? You know, if, could you, if they, let me tell you, if they had Don Jr. and Eric handcuffed, President Trump would have been there. He'd have flown there and taken care of business. But Diddy, it's just, his reaction is just a little different. Yeah, I, I figured he thinks if he's, if he's quiet and that doesn't make any complaints, just let it go. 
because they'll, they'll find out who he is and they'll say, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I just texted you again, Rich. You know, somebody uh, said during in the live chat, live texting on the radio, a ratings winner. It is something that has not been done before, probably. Actually texting a guy on the radio, texting his cell phone number to listeners, probably is something you haven't heard done before. I will agree. We're breaking barriers here. Well, I appreciate it very much, and uh, I will certainly... Don't abuse it. Don't abuse it, Doug. But I always try to help you. I really, I appreciate. It. Take care. Take care. No, no, no. He does help me and does actually text me some things of value on occasion. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Jeff from Maine, Brian. Hey, Jeff. What's up? You know, this is really thing is most liberals don't believe in a true God, one that holds you accountable. They believe in a generic one that'll accept you no matter what you are, you know, and not change. But they don't realize that the God of Israel is the God who he sent the Messiah through, and he chose them to bless the nation. Mm -hmm. And as conservatives, we support Israel. These liberals, the first thing they want to do is blame or hate on Israel. Mm -hmm. So bizarre that they don't see... And, and um, the second thing I want to say was the prayers for anyone that was on that ship and um, that bridge, and, you know... To, I don't know how high that bridge is, but if you're in a vehicle and you're not trained how to get out, your chances of survival. Well, you know, here here in I, here in Florida, you know, we have canals everywhere on the sides of the road, and in all of my cars, including my daughter's car, I we I always have one of those things that you you I keep in the side pockets of the doors that you can take out and tap the glass on the window and it'll break it. You know. Everybody should have that in their car. Now, I don't know how good that'll do when you fall off a big bridge and you may be unconscious, you know, because that's a long fall. What you have to remember is you're going to wait until the water is up within two inches of the ceiling. Before you break the glass? Before you break the glass? Well, or you better take it because when you... When the pressure's equal, you can open that door and get out or roll down the window and get out. But... Mm. That pressure gets in and equalizes. That's when you want to get out. Okay. Well. All right. I'll. You know. I wish Mary Jo Kopechny had one of those things. She might still be alive today. Be an old lady. No. Yeah. All right. Appreciate the. No. Yeah. Go ahead. I'll give you the last word. Do you think that it was a coincidence that bridge hit with news people there? You know. What are the odds? I don't know. I'll, I'll tell you why I don't know, okay? Because I, I don't jump into conspiracy theories, and it's easy to do that, and a lot of people do that. I don't know. Um, I've been to Baltimore a few times. I've driven through it. It doesn't seem like a place I really want to stop and visit too much. Uh, frankly, I mean, I've driven, what I've seen off of I-95 don't look too good. Um, but it, it, it's, and I'm not saying this is the case, but it is possible that the Francis Scott Key Bridge is a local landmark, and the local TV crews might have a permanent camera on that bridge all the time. You know, like here in Florida, we have live cams all over the place in key areas, lighthouses, beaches, some bridges. And I, you know, and I watch local live cams all the time. And uh, it's possible it's that, but I, I, I don't know. But I do know this, okay? The media are too quick to tell us it was an accident. How can they determine that yet? How can they determine it was an accident already? They can't. There's been. Yeah, they can't. That's right, and that's the reason I question. You know, why and how it happened? Because that, that's just. Well, listen. There was this this god awful ISIS attack in Russia, which I no, noticed no sympathy for the poor Russian civilians killed by ISIS. You know, um, in this country, uh, and and we see Hamas and other. Uh, questionable people crossing our southern border and this happens it, it's something certainly to 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 check out one last quick thing brian if they can attack in russia who has a lot stricter borders than we do right now yeah to be on high alert what, what's going on going to happen here and, and look at the media's reaction to the treatment of these isis terrorists i mean you know come on i mean i you know i i, I don't i mean i i the one guy, they hooked up electricity to his testicles, I read. Yeah, and let me tell you something. If those and when these terrorists try something in America, uh, there won't be any sympathy. Um, are, listen, are you kidding? The Democrats, all, 
Eric Holder, who was, you know, attorney general, you know, for Obama, Eric Holder, when he left the Clinton administration after 9-11, Eric Holder was an attorney for al-Qaeda terrorists in Guantanamo Bay. You know, so in this country, uh, they, they lawyer them up with ACLU, liberal do-gooder commie lawyers to defend them. It's insane. Well, if they try that stuff in Maine, they won't make it to court. Well, I'll tell you this. It's, ISIS, ISIS is going to have a hard time on their next recruiting venture to recruit people to attack in Russia after this. Right. Yeah, that's why they, yeah. Day and age where we need to pray and look up because the Lord's coming and God bless. You. Indeed. All right. Take care. If you're on hold, stand by. Back after this. Don't sit on the sidelines. Be right back, guys. Saying it's something that says trafficking. Yeah, and that's right. Definitely tips. Right yeah, away. yeah, kids yeah. So yeah. He fled. Someone's gonna take them they had to stop in Miami to refuel, probably. Yep. There's a, there's a picture of it's Antigua. Uh, like See, they don't understand what sex trafficking. Sex tra if they get you put these girls on your private jet, fly them somewhere, you're sex trafficking. Yeah, that's what it's gonna <laughs> yeah I mean. There's, uh, I mean, you know, there's the whole thing that people. I mean. Kind of proven that mm -hmm. he was the one that put out the hit that pot from yep. that pot died, so yep. got away with that, but other things we can catch up with. Exactly. Karma applies with flesh. Yep. Welcome. If you're new, make sure you subscribe, guys. Are you living your best life? Are you feeling the way you know you should be? This is John, CFO at Lighthouse Medicine. And also, if you're new, welcome to the channel. You'll love it here, I promise. All right, call us on hold, stand by. Remember, the free shipping offer continues at MyPillow.com with our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E, site-wide. No matter how large or small the purchase, no matter how light or heavy, free shipping site-wide plus the special deals. There's huge specials going on at MyPillow.com with our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E. But free shipping continues site-wide. And that free shipping, I check it every day. It will end without notice. I'll find out when I go to the website and it's gone. Free shipping site-wide with our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E. And that's a huge savings on top of the already discounted uh, specials that are going on with our promo code Kane at checkout. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? 
My name is Brian. Philip. Hey, Philip. What's up? Oh, uh, uh, well, um, I'm from Jamaica. I'm way past 29 now, but when I was 29, I became a Republican. After learning and understanding what the Democrats defend. Mm-hmm. I got two exciting news. Well, I became a citizen last December. Congratulations, an American citizen. Congratulations. It was exciting. <laughs> and I uh, couldn't wait to vote, which I did last week. Oh, how'd that feel? You got, you voted for, your, was that the first time you voted? First time. Yeah. How lucky for you. Your, your, your first, your first time voting and you got to vote for Donald Trump. How exciting. Man, I couldn't wait. Of course, they will come in surprise in the polling station. Oh, he's a Republican. Yes. Oh, because you're black. Yeah. Yeah. It was my people in the air. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Well, that's good. So, so here you are helping to make America great again. Yes, yes. And P. Diddy is running an island. I have to dig him up like um, Saddam. So, you know, this thing with P. Diddy, Trump's house gets raided. He and his family go on television and talk about government corruption. They attack the FBI. They attack the government. They attack the prosecutor. They attack the... P. Diddy... I mean, his plane flew from L.A. to Miami. Now I'm hearing it's in Antigua. Antigua, you know, and what's going on here? Did he leave his kids behind to get arrested? You fell. <laughs> I mean, who does that? Right. When, the, you know, when you're guilty, you know? When you're guilty, yeah. He's, he's got something to hide. I, I, you know, listen. This, this sex trafficking, you're innocent in America until proven guilty in a court of law by a jury of your peers, unless your name's Trump, of course. Then they say you're guilty. you got to prove your innocence. So I, don't, I haven't followed this case. I just know that his reaction, the last time I've seen somebody act like this, this is like O.J. when he, when he did that chase, right? Um, the past couple of weeks, I've been listening to Jason Whitlock. Oh, yeah. So in Jason, Jason Whitlock was uh, uh, Rush Limbaugh's producer, Snurdly. Yeah. Oh no, football. Oh, the football player, the other Whit, the other Whitlock. Yeah. Uh, you're talking about sports. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Oh. Talked about his father, who was involved in drugs, got. Gotcha. Shot in his car. Well, everybody's got a story. I mean, everybody's got a... You know, O.J. grew up in the projects in Oakland. What does that mean? Everybody's got a story and, and life's tough. Does it mean, you know... Well, you know, sex... I don't know... If you put girls on your private jet and fly them around, that's sex trafficking. Well, we wait for the um, FBI to find him, then we'll find out, um, you know? Well, yeah, uh, unless, maybe he'll buy a house next to Roman Polanski in France, you know? Well, they don't extradite people accused of such things. Yeah, right. Oh, man. He would probably never get charged. Yeah, well, I, I tell you, Phil, did you get a U.S. passport because you became a U.S. citizen? Have you done that yet? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Jamaica weekend for a week. That's great. A U.S. passport. Oh, yeah, that's great. You know, all the countries I've been to, I don't have a single stamp in my passport. No, nobody wants to stamp it. They ask, sometimes they'll ask for they, they'll, they'll, You can get them stamped if you ask. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Well, let me see the numbers on mine. I'm going down on my Jamaica and then come up with my U.S. Okay, well, I appreciate it. All right, take care. All right, a new American citizen. His first vote was for Donald Trump. How exciting. So uh, P. Diddy, you know, he was very opinionated about President Trump. Listen to this. This is P. Diddy. He's talking uh, to Charlemagne de God. If this man is elected, we're not standing by no more getting killed. We're not scared of anybody standing up and standing by. We're on the verge of a race war. Wow. Class act, Diddy. Class act. Really? <laughs> Bizarre. And and Charlemagne the God's just like nodding his head, like, oh yeah, in agreement? I I don't know. 
Oh, boy. Okay, we're going to take our break for the bottom of the hour. We'll, there's did, Oh, Rachel Maddow had a freak out on uh, MSNBC. I know nobody watches that. I'm going to play some of that coming up and a whole bunch more. You're listening to The Steve Kane Show, Florida's longest-running radio show. If you're on hold, hang in there. Our number's toll-free, 1-888-465-2631. 888-465-2631. We'll be right back. Making morning radio great again. It's the Steve Kane Show with Brian Craig. All right. Isn't that amazing? We'll be back shortly, guys, right after this. We'll be back in 48 seconds.
Yeah, right, Johnny Douglas. Wait, there was another thing I wanted to share. Let me find it. Jeremy, I appreciate... All right. Welcome back, one and all. My name's Brian. This is The Steve Kane Show, Florida's longest-running radio show. Um, you know, the media are into creating narratives we talk about a lot. But some of the leading hate figures that you've seen throughout the history of modern media are media creations. Um... I'll give you two, and then there's a third one that's newer, but two old ones. David Duke, okay? David Duke was Grand Wizard of the KKK back in like 1980-something, 70-80-something, I don't know. And he ran for a state rep in Louisiana, and he went and registered as a Republican. And the media gets all excited, and, oh, the Klan, they're Republicans. You know, a bunch of nonsense, Okay. And David Duke used to be in the news all the time, and then he disappeared. He, he went to Russia for its period. I can't remember. Then he disappeared. And then when Trump ran the first time, I turn on CNN. All of a sudden, they got David Duke there, and he is endorsing Donald Trump. And he, was, he had been so long uh, since David Duke had been on television, and he was so down and out, he was wearing a blazer that did not even fit him. It was like two or three sizes too big. It was so bizarre, and, and they, the, the media take these fringe, listen, there's always fringe lunatics in every political position that are racist and filled with hate towards another group, not, you know, Klan, BLM, you know, like this thing that Diddy said I played, You're always, you can always find extremists, but what the left like to do is when they can label them a conservative somehow, they, uh, and connect them to a conservative who's running for president, they make a big deal out of them. So David Duke, they brought out of retirement, the left, and he's a total, you know, David Duke's a complete creation of the media. He's a nobody and a nothing, and he never was anything, but the media made him into something because he served their purpose. Um, another famous example is Fred Phelps. You guys remember Fred Phelps? He had a church in Kansas, and he had a website, God Hates... And then he used the F word, that, that derogatory word I'm not going to use, for gays. And what Fred Phelps did, he was completely insane. He was a reverend, um, you know, probably sent into a mail order catalog. He was so old. And he would go to, this was in the uh, 90s, Fred Phelps would go to uh, funerals of people who had died of AIDS and protest them. And the media made him the whole face of the Christian right, because Pat Robertson and, and Jerry Falwell and other great men like D. James Kennedy in our own town and many, the great Jerry Falwell who Steve knew, you know, and, and, the, and, and the great Pat Robertson, they were trying to make Fred Phelps them, and he, he was a nothing. And I went to a funeral of um, uh, a celebrity, I'm not gonna say, and he was gay, and he died of AIDS. And I was there, and this was in Miami, and Fred Phelps showed up, and I got to see him in person. His, his whole group was about eight people, and they were family members of his. He was a, and I realized what a nobody this guy was. He was a complete media creation. He had a church with about 20 people in it. The ones that weren't his kids and cousins were the spouses of his kids and cousins. Fred Phelps, he was a nobody. But the media made him into this big thing because they could use Fred Phelps to say, this is Jerry Falwell. This is um, Pat Robertson. Okay? Now, there's a new one, Nick Fuentes. Okay? Now, the Daily Wire is Ben Shapiro's outfit. And they're getting a lot of uh, 
I don't know. They're, they're, they, they fired Candace Owens this last week. And I don't know where she's going to turn up. She may turn up working for President Trump. She trashed Trump last year in such a disgusting way. But, you know, Trump may forgive her. And if, you know, anyone that Trump brings in, I'm going to support anything Trump does, okay? But the way she talked about Trump last year was really bad. Bad and petty. It was so, it, it, it you know... And I do not agree with her positions on Israel. I, I don't think Candace Owens is anti-Semitic. I just think she's uninformed. So I was talking to the rabbi, the rabbi doctor that called in the first hour. Um, I don't think she's anti-Semitic, Candace Owens. I just think she's uneducated on Israel. And she doesn't understand. And she, she sees an equivalent between U.S. support of Israel and U.S. support of Ukraine. She doesn't understand, Okay. And I've heard her, she's, she's smart and she's articulate, and, and I've heard her win debates up against some of the best leftists. But when it comes to Israel, she's just very uninformed and just not educated on it, and she doesn't understand it. And um, I know she had some people after her that were doing crazy things and all of that, but she was fired from the Daily Wire. No one could convince me that Ben Shapiro doesn't have any say in that. No one can convince me it wasn't because of her anti-Semitic positions. And I, I was talking about this on my podcast the other day, and a lot of people say, well, why are they firing her for her anti-Semitic positions? And, and I, by the way, I'm building up to something that Jeremy Boring at the Daily Wire said yesterday that he, it, crazy what he said. I'm going to play it for you in a minute. There's an update on this. Um, you got to understand something, okay? Um, you know, if you don't, I mean, I know most of you probably understand this, so I apologize, but we do have liberals listening. You know, so sometimes we have to get out the uh, fat pencils and the crayons because we have liberals listening. Israel exists today because when the Nazis took power and the Holocaust was gearing up, the countries of the world would not take in the Jews. And the, the, the Nazis were trying to exterminate Jews from existence in the gene pool of this planet. And the Democrats in this country, Roosevelt, would not even accept liberal Jews. In fact, I mean, uh, European Jews, uh, even though, uh, you know, there's, this is known, it's kind of forgotten, but Roosevelt sent European Jews who were begging to enter the United States back to Europe, and some of them ended up dead in concentration camps, okay? So Israel was formed in 1948 so that if, you know, if... God forbid something like that happened again, and then look what's going on in Gaza now, right? Something like that happened again, Jews would have a place to go for safety. So uh, being a Zionist is not a, a bad thing. I know a lot, like, a lot of people think that is. I don't understand this. But Ben Shapiro is an, a, a proud, and he should be proud. I don't like Ben Shapiro personally. I, I don't know him personally, but from listening to him over the years, I don't like him. Um, I don't think he's likable. I think he's very arrogant. I think he's of mediocre talent. He talks as fast as an auctioneer. Remember that guy in the commercials in the 80s that would talk? That's like Ben Shapiro. And uh, he's a never-Trumper. He, he has said that he believes that President Trump had sex with Stormy Daniels. Give me a break. You know, I don't. But I do agree with him when it comes to Israel. And um, when, when you, the attack that Hamas made against Israel, you know, Israel's been getting attacked my entire life. You guys, you know, we don't have the suicide, homicide bombings every other day like we used to. But that attack was one of the most barbaric things I've ever seen. It's, be, it's more than medieval. It's like prehistoric barbarian attacks that took place at that music festival. And I don't even want to know how bad it was. And I do have friends in Israel that I've talked to, and it's, it's scary. I mean, and I, and I have seen some things I wish I wouldn't have seen that in the aftermath of that. And it, it was, it's just awful. And Ben Shapiro, uh, his, his viewpoint, and I agree with him on this, as much as I don't like the guy, I agree with him on all of his positions on Israel, 
you know, he's a strong supporter of Israel, as I am, as President Trump is, and you should be too. Jews are such a small population of, of this world. You know, in the United States, Jews are about 3 or 4% of the population. Now, living in South Florida, that's hard for people to understand. We have a large Jewish population in South Florida. Jews are about 3 4% of the U.S. population. Tiny. You know? And, uh, there's, and you see this anti-Semitism that's been going on this year since those horrific barbarian attacks on Israel in October. So Ben Shapiro is fighting for the survival of Jews. You look at what's happened in the world's against them. Even the U.S. government uh, did some terrible things, okay, uh, in regards to Israel just yesterday. Maybe we'll get to that later. Or, I don't know. Um... So when, when there's someone working at the Daily Wire, which has been Shapiro's outfit with Jeremy Boring, and they are taking positions in support of Hamas, of course they fired her because of it, Candace Owens. And I know a lot of people say, I wouldn't fire someone because of their opinion. Um, I don't talk about it a lot on the air. I'm a very religious Christian. I'm Catholic. Um, I've been Christian my whole life. About 10 or 15 years ago, my wife and I uh, became Catholics, and it's a, it's a year-long process to, to become a Catholic, even though we're already Christians in the Catholic Church. Um, I am a very religious Christian who pray. I pray every day. I pray multiple times a day, throughout the day, every day of my life. I don't talk about it a lot, and, and I'm not as schooled on the Bible as I should be, and that's one of the reasons I don't talk about it a lot, because I'm not as, I, I, you know, as much of a Christian as I am. I don't read my Bible enough, and I don't, you know, and I, don't, I, can't, I can't quote by, scriptures and all that like a lot of people do. But I will tell you this. Um, there is no one who is in favor of free speech and expression than I am. There's no, I mean, I am. With all that being said, if, if, if I had someone who was denying Jesus, I would not be able to tolerate that because I would feel that I was denying Jesus. If I, if I took part in allowing someone, whether it's a caller or a guest, if I was an employer and, 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 had somebody, and they were denying Jesus, I would feel that I was doing that. I was taking part in it and I would not be in it. And by the way, you're welcome to call me uh, on the air about this on agree or disagree with me. I would not be able to tolerate someone who was denying Jesus, a caller or a guest. Maybe that's wrong. I don't think it is, but I wouldn't be able to do that. And I imagine most of you that are Christians would agree with that. Okay? And I'm not talking about some wackadoodle who called every once in a while. That'd be bad enough or a guest. Candace Owens worked for the Daily Wire, Ben Shapiro and Jeremy Boring, even though Shapiro denies he's in management. He's a founder of the thing with Jeremy Boring. He's got juice. It's the, you know, it wouldn't be there without him. Right? So, um, if, if I had an outfit like the Daily Wire and I had somebody that I was paying a lot of money to on my platform who was denying Jesus every day, bringing on guests to deny, I, I wouldn't be able to do it. I would not be able to Support that or allow it. Because as I can put up with pretty much everything, um, but that is one that I wouldn't be able to do because I would feel like I was sinning and I'd be doomed if I allowed that. Well, that's the viewpoint that Ben Shapiro is coming from with these very anti-Semitic viewpoints that Candace Owens is spouting. Now, I will tell you, I don't think she really is anti-Semitic. I think she's just not informed on the issue. She's not educated on the issue. She doesn't understand Israel. She, as I told a caller earlier, she believes there's a moral equivalency between U.S. support of Israel and U.S. support of Ukraine. She doesn't understand. And, and again, I do not like Ben Shapiro at all. I think he's unlistenable, and I disagree with so many of the things he talks about. I think he's also kind of weird, okay? But when it comes to Israel, I'm, I, I probably agree with him all, uh, uh, close to 100%. And I thought he did something amazing uh, a few weeks ago 
Um, I don't recall what, what sparked this, but Elon Musk had said something, and Ben Shapiro went to Poland. He took Elon Musk to Poland to Auschwitz. And I thought that was pretty amazing. And it was a life-changing experience for Elon Musk, who, by the way, has endorsed Trump and Republicans in November. And by the way, he says the country is done without them. So um, I, I think them parting ways was a good thing, Candace, uh, Candace Owens and Ben Shapiro. How can you expect a guy who's a very religious Jew supporting Israel in some very difficult times right now, I mean, the, Israel can't even depend on the United States right now, which is disgusting. A major rise in anti-Semitism. And then Candace Owens is saying these crazy things and bringing on people to back her up. Sometimes she brings on Jews to try to back her up. Crazy. Um, so uh, I got to take a break, but the Daily Wire is about to... Uh, Jeremy Boring from the Daily Wire said something yesterday that is insane and it's incredibly stupid and I don't and I hope he takes this back. I'm going to play this for you when we get back from the break. It's the Steve Kane show. My name's Brian Craig and and what I said so far, you're welcome to call in and agree or disagree uh, about what I said about Candace Owens, Shapiro Israel and is it right or wrong for me to say that I wouldn't tolerate somebody here uh, as a caller or a guest denying Jesus to me every day? Certainly wouldn't hire somebody and put them on my platform and pay them seven figures a year to deny Jesus all the time. I, would that be the equivalent of me doing it? And I would say yes. Our number is toll free, one 465 1-888-465-2631. 1-888-465-2631. 1-888-465-2631. Thirty-one. We'll be right back. The cold, hard truth. Delivered morning six to nine right here on the Steve Kane Show. This sales event will be held at one location only. City Key of Greater Orlando, just off the Florida Turnpike. Drive a little, save a lot. Make that switch. Make that switch. The City Key. The City Key of Five Hundred. I'm answering DMs and some emails. Steve, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Are right, you coming on can at you eight? Bring me in here? Um, yeah, yeah. I I got this audio thing that I, about Shapiro that I, I built up to. I'll, but I'll I'll do it when you're on. I'll, I'll, okay. Uh, okay. This is John from Lighthouse Medical Center, CFO and Director of Neuropathy. We want to welcome you to Lighthouse Medical Center this year. It's our 75th anniversary, and we've been able to help a lot of patients. We want to be able to help you with your neuropathy issues as well. We have numbness, burning, pain, tingling, lack of sleep, or balance issues. Please come see us and let us help you with that problem. There's hope out there for you. We've had thousands of patients come through Lighthouse Medical Center being able to... 
to see the quality improved in their life and being able to help them and their family has been a blessing to us and a blessing to them. And we look forward to doing that uh, for the next 75 years. We don't just treat neuropathy at Lighthouse Medical Center. We have a specialized knee pain program with non-surgical solutions for bone on bone and knee pain issues. We also treat chronic back pain, ankle, knee, hip, and shoulder pain. Call for a free consultation with us today, 754-222-6642. 754-222-6642. That's 754-222-6642. Ryan Gray here. When it comes time to get my blood work done, I don't have time to spend hours at the doctor's office or waiting hours for one of those big labs. That's why I need any lab test now in Boca and any lab test now at Coral Springs for all of my lab work. Their techs are highly skilled and professional, and their prices are guaranteed to be the lowest on lab work you'll find anywhere. Appointments aren't necessary. Doctor's orders and prescriptions, they're not needed either. I'm in and out in 15 minutes or less. I get the results the next day in my email box, and they also send it to my doctor. There's lots of any lab test nows around, but these are the only two advertising on our radio station. So don't use the rest. Only go to any lab test now of Boca at any lab test now of Coral Springs. Any lab test now of Boca is in the Sandalfoot Plaza. That's where the Western Beef is between Palmetto Park Road and Hillsborough. Road. What is the name? I just forgot her name. What is the name of the conservative girl? She's been around for many, many years. You don't see her around anymore. She's Filipino, American. Uh, Michelle Malkin. I just remember the name myself. Okay. Michelle Malkin. On the radio. We take on the social justice warriors for breakfast. Now the... All right. Call us on hold. Stand by. I'm Brian. Steve joining us. Now, before we get back to the news and the issues, you know, Steve, I was just listening to the recorded commercial. John, who's the director of neuropathy at Lighthouse Medical Center in Pompano. Yeah. Now, John mentions this in that uh, recorded message. But to me, this says it all. You know, they have a treatment for neuropathy that works. It worked in Steve. I've met many listeners that have, I mean, that one guy at um, uh, Wings Plus when we were there a few weeks back, I mean, I, I, the guy wanted to hug me because his neuropathy. I, 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 well, stop asking because I can't either. And every time I do it, I feel like I'm slighting the guy because <laughs> I forgot his name. I was, it was, well, when, when somebody, when a man's trying to hug you, the last thing you're worried about is his name. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> but anyway, um, John mentions this in the recorded commercial. Lighthouse Medical Center has been in practice in Pompano for 75 years with the same family of physicians. That's amazing. Um, I believe it is probably the oldest practice, certainly in Broward County, if not all of South Florida. And this is with the same family. This is not a medical practice that's been sold a bunch of times and they kept the name. The same family. I think that is all the endorsement you need. Uh, that Lighthouse Medical Center, uh, that their treatment works, and if, yeah, exactly. I mean, 75 years. I mean, that's that's amazing. Same family of healthcare professionals, same practice in Pompano for 75 years. Lighthouse Medical Center. Now, no matter where you're located, they can help you with your neuropathy. Not just in another part of town or Florida. Anywhere in America, they can help you. Their number is 754-222-6642. 754-222-6642 and online lighthousemedicalcenter.com. Now see, before we get started, can I, I want to play this clip I had been teasing before the break, if you don't mind, okay? So, okay, so Jeremy Boring, who is a very funny guy, he is hilarious. Um, he's conservative. He's Ben Shapiro's partner at The Daily Wire. He did a, a Twitter Spaces last night, which I guess is now called an X Spaces. It's, it's, like, a, it's like a talk show on t Twitter. And uh, somebody, I'm going to play this clip. Somebody called in and asked um, a question. Let me play this for you. Wait, okay, J J Jeremy, Jeremy, I appreciate you saying that. Is there any chance that the public could also get an interview between Ben Shapiro and Nick Fuentes? Is there any possibibility that could yes. happen? We will. The public just got a debate between me and Nick Fuentes tonight. I feel like we've taken a huge step. I agree. It's a really good step. Do you think there's a possibility we could broker something like that? Because I think that's a conversation America needs to hear. I've said all along throughout the evening that I don't speak for Ben Shapiro or any of my hosts, but I would be absolutely thrilled to have Ben speak to Nick or anyone who on my team who wants to speak to Nick. Okay. Nick Fuentes is this white nationalist Nazi. He's 25 years old. He is a kid. Okay. 
And he weaseled his way into Mar-a-Lago with Kanye. Remember that thing with Kanye, Steve? When Kanye showed up unannounced with his posse and then, oh, Trump's meeting with a white nationalist. They should not be promoting this Nick Fuentes. He's, he's, he's a 25-year-old kid. He's a nobody. And he's, he's the Nazi of, of the new millennia. It used to be David Duke and Fred Phelps. Now they're trying to make this guy into something. And, you know, Nazis, uh, yeah, Nazis and Klansmen and white nationalists, they do exist, but they are very few. And when, when there's one that's vocal, they get made a big deal as if there's this movement that does not exist out there. And I, and, um, I, I can think of nothing more destructive than to give a platform to a nobody Nazi, white nationalist, uh, and, and, get, and, and make him into a national figure by putting him on a program to be interviewed by Ben Shapiro. That, you know, that gives him the credibility it gives him credibility to go up against him. And, uh, I mean, I don't know what kind of Nazi racist he is when he's hanging out with black people like Kanye West, but uh, it's, it's just stupid. And they're, they're taking a lot of flack because they fired Candace Owens for her anti-Semitic, anti-Israel positions. So I guess they figure if they bring this Nazi around, uh, Nick Fuentes, that it'll somehow wipe away that bad idea. It's just a bad idea, and I, I just wish they, they would. I mean, when I first started working with you, um, you ha remember that Nazi, Hank Pritchard? Oh, yeah. Uh, he was a... I mean, the clan. Yeah, he was a real Klansman, and um, I had... In my, uh, I think it was one of my sons. Yeah. Crazy. It's stupid, stupid. You know... Um, when, when I was a kid in Okeechobee, the clan, the real clan was active, okay? And I've seen the real clan in action. Uh, it was a long time ago, early 80s. You know, those were guys, they were old timers then, you know. It's not funny, it's not cute, it's not worthy of a spectacle. And, um, you know, uh, and uh, Klansmen and Nazis are not people you want to elevate because what they do when you elevate them the left take these fringe people, make it look like they have a whole organization and a movement, and of course it's a Republican movement that supports, now it would be Trump, but whatever, you know, Republican is running for office, all of a sudden that Nazi, that Klansman will endorse them and then they'll be given a platform. It's just a bad idea. All right, now, Steve, we're, it's, uh, we're three seconds away from the break, so we'll take our break and then we'll uh, come back with more. It's the Steve Kane Show. Steve's here. I'm Brian. Back after this. WSFS 104.3 HD. Um, taking, okay, somebody said something about phone calls. Taking a phone call from a moron is different <laughs> than elevating somebody as an invited guest with a, uh, with a microphone and in the studio. You know, you can't help who listens. You can't help who calls in. But when you, uh, when you bring somebody into the studio and give them a microphone, you're elevating them to another level. Do you understand what I mean? You know? And uh, you're giving them a level of credibility when you're, okay, we have this invited guest and he, he's a Nazi, he's a Klansman, here, he's in studio today, who's going to give it, that's not the same as a caller, much different. You're elevating and giving them uh, credibility as like a credible voice in something, big difference. You know, if, if, and if you, that doesn't make sense to you, well, you, you, you must have gone to school on the short school buses. Big difference. Yeah, it's like an endorsement. It's an endorsement that that's a credible viewpoint. And, and some things are just too ugly to give an endorsement to.
the, the Geraldo's afternoon show was a tabloid show. That was like a P.T. Barnum kind of show, like Jerry Springer. It wasn't like a credible news program or commentary program. Oh, yeah. Very strange. <clears throat> On the air since nineteen seventy seven, it's the Steve King Show with Brian. All right, callers on hold, stand by. I'm Brian Craig. It's the Steve Kane Show. Steve back. Uh, I just, oh man, Steve, I just watched uh, during the break, uh, I just saw a new video of the uh, collision with the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Fox, they were covering it extensively. And to me, that's uh, the other thing, headlines that are in the papers. No, I will disagree with you on that, um, and, and I'll and I'll and I'll and I'll tell you why. Um, especially with this new now, the new video. I just want to say this came from a credible source, Jack Persobic, who just had dinner at Mar-a-Lago the other day. So he's a he's a voice of credibility, Jack Persobic. Okay, um, I don't know him personally, but he's friends with some friends, and he has a new video that he posted. Uh, and within the last 30 minutes, and I'm going to retweet this on my Twitter, by the way, you guys, we'll see it. I, and this is not the video I've seen. Okay, and I'll t I, I, before I describe the video, I'll tell you why it's something to look out for. I think the media are too quick to call this an accident. In the aftermath of the ISIS attack in Russia, and Hamas and other terrorists have been found crossing our southern border. Okay, and, and, and yeah. What I was going to say, obviously there is a smorgasbord of different, each day presents a smorgasbord of different directions you can go yep. in the form of a story, and there are, there are a couple out there today which I think... Well, we, we'll, we'll get, we'll, we'll, no, no, we'll get to those in a minute, but you haven't seen the new video. Let me, can I describe the video? Well, finish up, I mean, I don't want, but I, you're miss. yeah. The one that I picked, uh, and then we can compare notes as to which one is more important. Uh, the headline I've got is from the New York Post, and it says, BB in diplomatic blow-up tells Trump, wrap it up, wrap up the war. Yeah, that's big, too. That's big, too. Is that? Well, the, yeah. Yeah, I do. I, I do. It's the new video on the bridge. Okay. Now, the, you know, we've had a terrorist attack in Israel. We have Hamas terrorists and other suspicious people crossing our border every day. That have, the, the media are immediately telling, nothing to see here with the Francis Scott Key Bridge and accident. Jack Posobiec posted a video that's, that's close up in high definition. I just retweeted this on my Twitter, uh, and it's from an angle I've not seen before. The ship, they're saying, runs... Uh, uh, 
the power goes out on the ship and it crashed into a support on the bridge and brought it down. I'm watching the video now. Uh, the ship, the, the lights go out on the ship. There's still smoke coming out of the smokestack. And the ship actually makes very a very sharp turn and aims directly at the support that brought the bridge down. And it, it looks as if it was... It hit it on purpose, not an accident. In this new video, we don't know yet, um, but but this very well this this very well could be uh, a terrorist attack. Um, Let me pick up on what you're saying. All right, let's say it was a terrorist attack. Based on the little bit we know about it, what about that terror? What about that would make it a bigger story than? The last ally that Israel has, which would be Donald Trump, because I be I'm not saying those aren't big stories. I'm not. I'm not trying to see who's bigger, Steve. What I'm trying to tell, but I, I'll, I'll tell you why. Because because in the because when okay, I'll tell you why. I think most of us agree Obama's running the country right now. Okay. And there were terrorist there were Islamic terrorist attacks on this country when Obama was president here in the homeland that there were cover-ups on. Uh, I talked earlier about the Boston bombing. Uh, they, they spent uh, eight or nine hours avoiding telling us who the shooter was, Nadal Hassan, terrorist, okay? It was a terrorist attack, I mean, I, I mean at Fort Hood. It was a terrorist attack at Fort Hood. You and I knew it. Uh, immediately, and the longer they went without telling us what happened, we knew it was Islamic terrorism. And the uh, the Department of Homeland Security under Barack Obama, remember how, what they did with the uh, Fort Hood? They they declared it an incident of workplace violence on the books. Then the Boston bombing happened. They spent all day telling us it was a power transformer that exploded, not terrorism. Why would they target uh, a the bridge in Baltimore, or whatever it is, because they can, and it's it's a big target. It's a and it's a you know. bigger story than. I don't, Steve. I'm not comparing who's got the biggest. You know what? I'm just telling you that they're ve that 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 the that the Obama the. the no way. Can you tell me? I am, but you just want to keep saying, "Well, tell me it's bigger than BB." What I'm. No, no, I don't want to forget who's bigger. Tell me what you think of that. You know, the idea. This is what I think. This is what I think, okay? The, 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 this is what I think. Obama and his minions are running the country, not Biden. We, uh, we, all, we talk about this all the time. Even Trump admits this. The, um, the Obama uh, first two terms there have recorded instances, two of which I just gave you, of declaring terrorist attacks anything but Islamic terrorist attacks because they don't want to have terrorist attacks uh, Islamic terrorist attacks on the books under their watch. The uh, the United States are Nash. We're in an election year, and the 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 Obama Biden regime are endangering our national security at levels it's never been done before with this open border. We've seen terrorists captured, some of them even admitting they're Hamas at the southern border, and they would have an interest in covering up a terrorist attack and declaring it an accident. Okay. Uh, because they don't want to have an Islamic terrorist attack or any type of terrorist attack on the books while they've got the southern border open because it may force them to close down the southern border, which the, the Obama-Biden regime doesn't want to do. Let me do, let's, I, I understand your point. Point well taken. Let me just cut back to the other story by itself. Do you, have you read anything about the uh, fall... Uh, fall yeah, there there was uh, between Biden and uh, and Israel. Yeah, I saw. I did. No, no, no. I've not. I've not. But 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 Netanyahu may say things that seem anti-Trump because he's desperate right now to save his country, and and Biden. Trump is siding with the. Uh with the Arabs. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Tell me about that. It's in the New York Post? Well, let's take a call or two, and then I'll pull up the Post while we're talking, all right? I, well, I'm online. It's a different... Well, that won't help me because I'm online. Just tell me the headline, and I'll look it up from that.
Well, all right, we'll take a call. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Nick on a ball. Hey, Nick, what's up? Yeah, I sent you. I yeah, good morning, Steve. I sent you. I sent you the link from one of the stations here. They're not calling it terrorism, but you know, I'm I'm saying you know I, nobody knows, but you know all these stories are 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 relevant. Steve's story well, about Israel. Do you know yeah. anything about the, the, the? Let's just focus for a minute on the Israel thing. And, and uh, do you know anything about yeah. a fallout, a fallout between Trump and Israel? Well, I, just from what I've heard from what from what you're saying, this is the first I'm hearing about it. Okay. Yeah, right. I don't, I don't, I, I, I don't see that in my New York Post. I'm going through it. So, right here, it's a major supply chain disruption. And, yeah. and, and China has been testing, they've been doing supply chain disruptions throughout the whole uh, Biden regime, you know, and, uh, and I'm, I'm here to tell you that I don't, we don't know what happened in Baltimore, but we do know this. The media are immediately, I, I'm looking at this new video from Jack Posobiec, which is on my Twitter, guys, Brian Craig Show on Twitter, and that's a ship with no power making a turn like that with the smoke coming out still of the, it seems very strange. Um, but um, it, it video where the power goes, it, yeah, it goes dark. But. That's correct. That's the video I'm talking about. But it's it's a much closer up view than I've seen earlier, and you can see it looks like a controlled turn of the ship is what I'm telling you into the support. I, I hope it's not. I don't want it to be a terrorist act, but I do know this that this country is being uh, Americans are dying every day because of the southern border being open. And if there was a mass terrorist attack, a massive terrorist attack at this level, this government would cover it up. Well, it, it looks suspicious, though, doesn't it? Yes. All these things all at once yes. yes. This and what's going, over, going on over in Israel, the attack. I can't, I can't find that story in, in the New York Post, Steve, that you're talking about. So you give me the headline, and I'll, I'll see if I can find it. But I think you may have misread that. I got it for you. It's on page, it's on page 18. BB's DC diplomatic blow up. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, is that an opinion piece? Is that an opinion piece? All right, I'll, I don't see it. I'll look for it. I'll look for it during the break. I, I got it. I'll look it up. I'll look. But I, I, it, it the print edition is different than the online edition. I don't know. In this discussion that we've got out there for the audience to comment on and see if any of them can add anything to All right. Anything? Uh, is that it, Mick, or do you have a final word? That's, that's basically it, except but they, they, uh, they rescued a couple of people. From well, that's good. That's good. I mean, when you go, you know, go and look at that video, the ship loses power and then it makes a, it looks to me a very controlled turn to hit the support head on with the bow of the ship. They turn the bow right into it. And I don't, I don't know how you turn a ship like that if it has no power with smoke coming out of the smokestack still. Oh, it's a big story. There's no... Well, and then, well, and who would have broken that, Steve? What? And who would have broken that story? Us, us, us. All right, take take care, Nick. You're you're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, hey Brian, Larry. Yeah, just to kind of help Steve understand, President Trump let uh, Ben Bibi Netanyahu know that he needs to wrap up the war because yes. he's losing support of the rest of the world. Yes, he's not taking sides with the Arabs. He. But, but, when, well, no, no, but when he says that, when he says that to Bibi... Kill Hamas is what he means. Kill them all. Kill Hamas is what he's saying. No, they, come on. That's they have, what yeah, they, have the, they have the Hamas leaders encircled, and they need, to, they, they need to finish it off, but they're getting all the pressure... What he's saying is fin finish it off before Biden makes you stop and pull out. That's it, exactly. So. Okay. Oh. I'd like to get feedback. Well, we just did. That's what he just—he knows. He says. Well, uh, oh, well, okay. All right. Appreciate the call. All right. Take care. Take care. 
All right. If you're on hold, stand by. We'll, we'll take a break and be right back. There now. 88 This is All right. And it's time to check in with Attorney Barry Siegel from the Siegel Law Group. Attorney Barry Siegel, good morning. Good morning. How are you? We're great. What do you have for us today? Well, excellent. Uh, well, first thing is uh, next Tuesday, April, excuse me, April 2nd, we have our next uh, workshop at our office at 2 p.m., and that's in our office in Boca Raton, and it's an estate planning, living trust workshop, but we also go into other things, including protecting your assets during your lifetime, and that's what I wanted to talk about today. You know, one of the things that keeps people up at night as they age is the cost of long-term care. And there's such a relief for people when they realize that there are ways to deal with this issue so they don't have to spend down their assets and potentially go broke or, or at the very least uh, uh, have things uh, go in a way where they uh, change their lifestyle going forward. And, and often what happens is we have families where the adult children uh, from other states, you know, let's say the Northeast, we had one up uh, from Connecticut yesterday that uh, they come down, they fly down specifically to have the meeting with uh, Bob or Dad and, and us to go over all this. And it is just such a relief for these families to realize that there's a solution to the, the situation of having to spend down their assets on the cost of care. In this case, the, uh, uh, the, the, the husband, and Alzheimer's, and many other uh, health ailments and uh, was receiving care and the costs were getting out of control and when they were given our name and, and, and uh, explored the possibilities and found out that we were able to give them the financial relief that they needed by helping them qualify for Medicaid protecting their assets. It was a huge relief on their shoulders and uh, and uh, you know, so we do that all the time and it's something that we really uh, enjoy seeing the relief and, and uh, uh, you know, the, the peace of mind that it gives to the people that come in. So that, and, and that's so that's going to be one of the things we talk about at our upcoming workshop next week on uh, April 7th. Yeah, and I'll t uh, a couple things. One, you have an entire team at the Siegel Law Group that do this all day, right? I mean, they're, they're just, I met them, and they're, they're, this is what they do is this Medicaid planning, and they know it inside and out. And, and your workshop in the afternoon, this is an unusual time. that Most of them are in the morning, so maybe if the mornings don't work for you, this 2 p.m. time sounds perfect, Barry. Uh, By the way, I, I did get a, uh, a response because uh, we also uh, market these on social media, and then somebody's like, uh, you know, I, I, work till, I work till 5, can you ever do them later? So, I mean, if we have enough people who would like to have us do one later in the day, you know, we'd be willing to do that. So it's, Absolutely. And it's like, I, I'd like to come to this, but uh, we, we can't ever make it during the day. Let us know. We'll make a, a, a list, and then we will uh, set up a date and time and let everyone know. Absolutely. And it, the Siegel Law Group is online at SiegelLawGroup.com or call 855-FLA-3782. 855-FLA-3782. And again, online SiegelLawGroup.com. All right, Attorney Barry Siegel, we will talk later in the week. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll be right back. Now, back to the Steve Kane Show with Brian Craig. Listen in the Palm Beaches on 95.9 FM, the Treasure Coast on 106.9 FM, here is in Boca on 95.3 FM, Fort Lauderdale on 90... and anywhere in the world at True... All right, calls on what's say, but I have the article, Steve. Uh, it has a different headline online, but let's take a, a call or two, and then I'll go through the article with you, okay? And I'm sure that your uh, take is inaccurate about Trump. I will find out. I will read it. We'll do it live on the air. I know so. I know so. I know Trump. You can always trust it. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Joel Allen from Fort Lauderdale. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. So, so about the ship thing, you're, I think you're right, you know, if they, if it, they proved it was a, a terrorist attack, you know, they would probably have to close down the border. Not only that is how many people would go towards Trump. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. We told you this open border, 
Yeah, exactly. And the and oh, Biden with you know the Biden Obama first two terms, they they declared Fort Fort Hood. Remember, there's a big deal. They said it was workplace violence, not uh, terrorism, and it stopped uh, some of the military personnel who were shot from getting benefits. Remember? Right. I mean, it was it was it was insane. And and in Boston, they were. I remember when they found that photo. And they hadn't got the guys yet, and they thought they were white guys. They were so excited. And then they found out it was Islamic terrorism. So there's a pattern of this. And if this and, and I, I don't want I want this to have just been a sad, tragic accident. Okay. I don't want America to be under attack. But if America is under attack and it becomes known America's under attack, they'll have to stop uh, transporting all of Latin America into the United States of America. The people would demand it. And they don't want to do that. They don't want to get right. Mm-hmm. Exactly. All right, Joellen, anything else? That's it? All right, appreciate... Uh, that's it. All right, appreciate the call. Okay, I do have the story. It has a different headline than yours, um, and the headline is misleading, I promise you. This is the New York Post, and I want to say, full disclosure, New York Post hates Trump. New York Post is Rupert Murdoch, okay? It's part of News Corp. It's part of the... Uh, well, uh, they, they, well it, it is part of the Paul Ryan, Rupert Murdoch, Never Trumper, Anti-Trump, Fake News Empire, okay? The headline, it, it's the same story with a different headline on the online version, because I don't, you know, I'm, no, it says basically the same thing. Trump warns Israel to finish up your war and get on to peace. We can't have this going on, okay? And that sounds like words and sentences taken out of context is what it sounds like to me because President Trump loves Israel. Let me read the article, okay? Um, oh, I'm going to read it on the air right now live, okay? And any article that begins with former President Donald Trump is already red flags, okay? You know what I mean? They got to emphasize that part, you know, you know. It says here, uh, because I don't, you never hear me say that, and I don't say that when I talk about President Clinton or President Obama, I don't say former President Obama, uh, you know, former President Obama is running the event. Former President Clinton, you say President Clinton, you say President Obama, you say President Carter. They only use this former thing with Trump because they're sick. Okay. But it says here, New York Post, I'm going to read it word for word. Former President Donald Trump has warned Israel to bring its war against Hamas in the Gaza Strip to a rapid close, telling an Israeli paper that the Jewish state is quickly shedding international support. Calling the October 7th terrorist attack by Hamas one of the saddest things I've ever seen, the 77-year-old Trump said Israel had made a very big mistake with the ferocity of its response. Uh, these photos and shots, I mean, uh, moving shots of bombs being dropped in the buildings in Gaza, the former president said during an interview um, uh, with Israel Hayam, owned by the family of the late casino magnate, Sheldon Adelson, I know he supports his. Let me finish. And it, no, I no, I, I yes. He says they're losing support because of the visuals, and he you need to. And before you lose support, you need to do what you got to do. Clean up, get rid of them, do what you got to do, because they're going to force you to stop soon. Okay, because of these visuals, he says you have to finish up your war. You got to get it done. The 45th president said, and I'm sure you will do that. And we got to get to peace. We can't have this going on. So he says, get it done. Get it done. That's a positive, and that's support, Steve. Get it done is support. He's saying, get the terrorists, kill the terrorists, get the terrorists, run the terrorists out, get control. You're losing support. and they'll, well, Yeah, so no, it's that, yeah. That sounds like support of Israel, T. It does to me. Absolutely. Let me give out the number, and you guys can tell us what it sounds like to you. To me, that's support. You got to get it done. You got to get it done because you're going to lose international support. Yeah, because the, the, they're going to cut them off. And Israel is not a rich country. People think it is for some reason because they have these anti-Semitic views towards Jews. No, he's not. No, he no, he's not in charge now. Trump. He's saying that the that Biden's going to cut them off. He's not coming back till January. Let me give out the number, and you guys can weigh in, one 465 2631 
2631. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Diane from Fort Myers. How are you doing? All right. Good. Hey, listen, you, you're seeing what's happening in the Congress with the uh, rhinos resigning. You know what the, uh, yes. the goal is there, right? Yes. They're trying to give the Democrats control of the House so they can stop Trump from being on the ballot. Not only that, Brian, they want to keep Trump off the ballot. That's what I said. That's what I said. <laughs> the Supreme Court uh, backed it with the Colorado ruling, and now we have this in front of us. How do you think we combat this? Brian? Well, I don't use that word. I mean, what we do is we, do, we follow Trump's lead. Because he knows what to do and what he does. And his lead is uh, vote in support for him. That's what you do. All right? What For what? Has to get approval from Congress to do what? When he gets elected. Or they're trying to keep him off the ballot. Correct. I have to combat that. I'm against that. He should be on the ballot. So am I. But when you got Ryan resigning and the House majority is going to... That's not going to fly. That's not going to fly. Listen, we have now, it's hard to keep track, okay, but uh, there, this, this latest joker who's resigning, he's still in Congress. And, yeah, Gallagher. He's leaving, I can't remember the date, but he's leaving the middle of April. If he would have left a week, if he, think, so middle of April, right? We're still in March. If he were to, if he were to leave in the beginning of April, it would, tr it would uh, legally require a special election to replace that Republican seat, which a Republican would win. But since he's waiting till the middle of April, it's so close to November, there will not be a special election, so we'll have an empty seat. And Emerald Robinson, who works for Mike Lindell, she used to be with One American News and Newsmax, said that uh, her sources are telling her other Republicans are planning on resigning. And it looks like the establishment that's completely fallen with the Trump family taking over the RNC are trying to give the Democrats the speakership. They have some fantasy that they'll be able to make changes in the 14th Amendment that would prevent Trump from being on the ballot. And that's not going to fly. Uh, the Supreme Court, even even the lunatics... Read it that way at all. Th there's, there's no way... I, I know it's scary. There's no way they're going to hand over the, the control of the House to the Democrats before November. And come November even if they were successful in doing that, there's going to be a massive wave, red wave in the House of Representatives. We're, we're going to have a, a huge majority in the House by these standards. I don't know how many seats, but by these standards, it'll be more than three. And, you know, so we'll be back in control and this nonsense will stop. But the Supreme Court, even that lunatic Katanji that was appointed by Biden, uh, agreed with, with Trump and kept him on the ballot in that Colorado case. So, no, there's nothing to worry about here. A lot of people that do shows like this like to scare people and and do all kinds of... I don't buy into conspiracy theories. I got to have... Just to let you know, Brian, that came from um, Roger Stone's group. Yeah. They did research on it. It was pretty... Oh, I'm not, saying, I'm not saying that they're not moving towards doing that and they, don't, they would not like to do it and they may try to do it. I'm talking about them being successful. You understand? I want to say shout out 47 years, bro. I, pr I appreciate everything you've done. And uh, Brian, you're doing a great job. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. All right. If you're on hold, stand by. We'll be back after this. Great again. Thank you. I really love it. It's this.
What do you guys think in the chat about that? Uh, does Trump support Israel, yes or no? Sounds to me like he's supporting Israel. Yeah, no, it is. Yes, Faith, I agree. Silly question. All right, call us on hold. Stand by. Our number toll free, 1 888 465 2631. You want to go back to the phones? What do you want to do? All right, let's go. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Brian from Deerfield. Hey, Brian. Hey, Brian. Hi, Steve. How are you? Uh, listen, with that statement, I didn't see the whole context. So I just want to go back on, on, the, on the school at the bottom of the news map. That was a bold statement of support, not just for Israel, but for the, politic, for the government of Israel which they needed this critical time, because they've been getting the shaft from this administration for the last three years, and especially now. He's laying the groundwork and telling them that even if this administration doesn't have your back, the administration coming in, the Trump administration, will have your back. And that's going to come into play a lot into the planning of future military campaigns, because I love the political, but I also love the prophetic. We haven't seen anything yet. This is the beginning of the military campaign. The next one will be the northern border, and it's going to expand from there. And they're going to need the United States and a friend like Donald Trump. And I think he's making that connection for them right now publicly for the world to know that this administration come in, will support Israel, 
and they will support them against aggression from everybody. Because they're getting... They get if you're, if you're right, I just... I mean, that just was totally the opposite of the way I root it. I'm, I root it. You just you took the you did, yes you 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 misread the context of the comments. Yeah, it, this is a, this is a, I thought this was a very bold statement to make on on yesterday, and Israel needed Netanyahu needed this. I mean, they don't even want to meet him. He can't talk to Congress. He can't meet with anybody. What is this crap? This guy's emboldened Iran. He's emboldening all the enemies. Hez, Hezbollah is going to be a big problem. I can tell you, this is going to be a big problem coming. And, and, and that's what I'm telling you, Steve. When you look at what, that's why this bridge thing, I'm not so, you know, don't let the media tell you there's nothing to see here. You got ISIS in uh, Russia. You've got uh, that god awful October attack in Israel. You've got, you, they have caught Hamas and other terrorists at the southern border. Our southern border has been erased. And then. Cole, what you're saying and what Brian is saying, you're telling me, is that, 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 that excerpt I, that I read is a statement of support, Don's support of Israel? Yes. I didn't actually get to read that, but the statement I saw yesterday from Trump is telling me, yes, this is a support for you. Yes, I will be there for you. And yes, when you're fighting... I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. He said, he said, listen, I, I did. You just don't want to hear the context. What he's saying is, is that the United States and the international community are working against you. You only have a small window to finish up in Gaza, so get it done quick. Yes. Don't mess around. Don't, he, what he's telling them is you're going too slow. Yes. <clears throat> Do it. Yes. I understand that you got to wipe out. Mm -hmm. and have this, you, you don't want to repeat of what happened on October 7th. Exactly. He, he's giving them political support. Say, go ahead and do it. You can... I'm a pro former president. I'm going to be the next president, and I'm. Uh, but I'm not president. I'm not president now, and they're going to cut you off if you don't finish now. Now let me ask you if, and I hope this was just a, a, a tragic accident. I don't want this country to be under attack. If this was a terrorist attack on the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore, do you think that this regime would try to make it pass it off as an accident if they could? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, they're taking the heat from the southern border. This is treason what's going on in the southern border. This is absolute disgrace what's going on. Absolutely. And this is the beginning of the attack. See, see, we are in a position now where the American people do not trust the press or the government. And anything that comes out of the press or the government, we immediately think the opposite is true, I think. Absolutely. Absolutely. And what a, what a great sea change that is to see that the American people have really woken up in a big way. And, and they see the, the way that Trump's being attacked with this, this joke of a judicial reform. See, see this, Steve, this new video, which will make its way around, this new video of the collision, the ship loses power, but the smoke is still coming out of the smokestack, and it makes a very sharp, controlled turn, so the bow hits that bridge support head on. It wasn't going to hit it head on. They turned the entire ship when it supposedly had no electricity. How do you, you know, and, and made a control and boom and hitting it the way it did. You that that bridge fell like a, br a bridge of uh, of uh, matchsticks. I mean, I couldn't believe. It sounds like they knew exactly where to hit it. Exactly. Well executed. They know exactly what, what pylons to take out. And that was it. It, it looks very it, and I, I hope it was not. But it looks very controlled, that ship, when it hit that. If you're right, there's no way they're gonna, that story's not going to come out. Not with this media? Idiot. I well, mean, it's going to it's gonna have to come out to the conservative media, and there'll be delays in that, because they, you know, liberals got code of control. Mm. I, I think that the American public are looking at this, and then they're just accepting, oh, it's just an accident. No, no, no. I think they're looking at this in a different way. They're calling it an accident before the NTSB is even there, man. I mean, how can they do that? All right, thanks Thanks for the call. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Yeah, good morning. Brian, you said you don't get into conspiracy theories and anything, but you just said that the bridge was attacked by terrorists. I, I, I said it is possible. I, and it's not a conspiracy theory. Say it's possible. You said that's what you believe. It's very possible. It looks like it could be. It, no, I didn't say that's what I... No, 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 no. Hold on. Slow down, Tom. Okay. I did not say that it's definitely what happened. I'm saying that the media are telling us it was an accident. I'm looking at this video that looks like a controlled collision. 
and I, I hope that it wasn't, and I want to get to the bottom of it. That, and, that's, and, and I'm watching video. It's not a conspiracy theory. I'm watching video that asks questions, that opens up all kinds of questions. This is not a conspiracy theory. And by the way, just because something's a conspiracy doesn't mean it's not true. Uh, and also, to now, the um, Donald Trump's case got reevaluated, got knocked down a couple, well, a whole bunch by half, but still didn't, you know, they still didn't find that. Um, the pressure is that he went into yesterday in danger of losing his priceless properties and he came out of yesterday with that not being he won he won and it shows the court and it shows the appellate courts on his side so he has to yes. say nothing he's going to come up He's going to he he's he's going to come up with, he he ha, at the beginning of the day he had to come up with half a billion dollars. Now he has to come up with 174 million which he had in his back pocket. he's got it in his back pocket the way he has the half minute. I got Brian I, I wonder how 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 uncomfortable you uh your you you must be Brian with uh Donald Trump's hand so far up here. <laughs> I should be so lucky that Trump had his hands on me. I wish he had his hands on me. I'd, I'd, be, I'd be very good about that. You think I want your hands on me? Now, that would not make me comfortable. All right. Um, you know, they, these are, th this is what's going on. Um, <laughs> oh. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I want to remind you guys, free shipping continues at MyPillow.com site-wide with our promo code Kane, K-A-N-E at checkout. And when you'll see that is, you know, when you go to the checkout at MyPillow.com and, you you know, you go to the part where you got to put in your address to ship and everything, you'll see it's free standard shipping. And uh, I check it each and every day because it will end without notice. But it's there now and it's site-wide. No matter how big, no matter how small your purchase, uh, it is free shipping with our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E. And on top of that, you get the special deal that's being offered. And there's incredible discounts and deals being offered right now at MyPillow.com with our promo code Kane, K-A-N-E. Free shipping. Side by. What are we doing, Mike? Okay, we're going to take a quick break and then, um, okay, all right. We, okay, we, I, you may get the, you, I apologize in advance. You may get the Amateur Gold Report. I want to apologize for that in advance, all right? We'll be right back. Right here on. All right. Now, let me uh, pull it. Now, now, again, the Amateur Gold Report is me going to WilliamYoungerman.com and pulling up the numbers off his website. But uh, things are looking good, Steve. Uh, gold is up $20.50 this morning. $20.50. It's up uh, at $21.92 and 10 cents. Silver's up seven cents at $24.81. Platinum is up $3 at $912. And uh, palladium is uh, even at $1,028. But when I look at this price, $2,192.10 an ounce, I, I, uh, I feel like uh, you know a, a dumb guy when I tell you this every single time. But the, when Steve and I first met with William Youngerman, gold was 400 Oh, there he is. We got him. No, no, it's not him. It was $435 an ounce. And you told me, Brian, you should buy some. And I said, Steve, gold's been around for 5,000 years. How much higher can it go? It's $435 an ounce. That's a lot of money. But how much higher after 5,000 years can it go? And today uh, it's at $2,192.10. So, you know, I, yeah, I, I should have listened to you and William Youngerman. And, and you should listen to them now because you still have an opportunity to get in. And um, his number, if you want to, William Youngerman opens up at 10 a.m. is toll-free 1-800-327-5010. 327 5010 his address, 150 East Palmetto Park Road in Boca, on the first floor of the Bank of America building, just east of US-1 Federal Highway on the south side of Palmetto Park Road. And if you missed the number of the address, you can find it on his website, williamyoungerman.com. That's williamyoungerman.com. All right, let's go back to our phones. I'm Brian Steves here. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Yes, good morning. Um, I can't seem to get you on my Alexa. I'm so sorry. Uh, th this is maybe a way to do it, okay? And I'll, I'm going to do. I'm going to turn everyone's devices on right now. You ready? If 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 if, if you have a speaker on next to your device, just say, "True uh, Alexa, play True Oldies." There you go. It'll come up. Okay. 
And by the way, that works on your other devices too. Alexa, volume six. There you go. Okay, I want to be nice. I want to be nice. Some people complain I was turning the volume up to seven. So six is, is suffice. Oh boy. Okay. So, so no, you 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 did re misread the context of that thing, Steve. President Trump's a strong supporter of Israel. We got nothing to worry about there. Okay. No worries. Nothing to see here. And uh, are you back with us, Steve, or did I lose you? Okay. Now these court victories yesterday were just spectacular. He got the bond reduced sixty percent. Sixty percent. And re remember that whole process, you know, th this, this came as a shock to the media. Um, I was watching the coverage on MSNBC and CNN yesterday, which was a lot of fun to watch. And CNN had their anchors in the morning broadcasting and camping out in front of uh, wherever the courthouse was yesterday because they had this vision that Trump was going to have to come up with half a billion dollars yesterday. And... Um, it didn't happen. So they were defeated. They, this really caught the press off guard. But the bond has to be covered before the appeals court can hear the case, right? We've been hearing this since the judgment came down. So they reduced it 60%. He said he had half a billion. Now he's going to come up with $174 million. He said he's going to pay it in cash yesterday in the press conference. And obviously the court is on his side because we have an out-of-control corrupt judge and an out-of-control corrupt attorney general, Letitia James and Judge Ngoron. So that's settled. This um, uh, Stormy Daniels thing yesterday, uh, I know the media don't want to tell you this. Jonathan Turley will, and he's a Democrat. Uh, Jonathan Turley, he said it brilliantly, and this is true. This Stormy Daniels case, you may be asking yourself, what is this case all about? The reason you may not know is because the media don't want you to know. They want you to be confused because if you know what it's about, you'll see there's no case. Br uh, Bragg is charging Trump with federal... Um, campaign finance uh, violations, federal federal crimes. Bragg is not a federal prosecutor. He has no jurisdiction when it comes to federal crimes, okay? So he is charging Trump with things that are not under his jurisdiction to prosecute. So that's going to go away too. I don't care how rude and pissed off the judge was to the Trump lawyers yesterday. That's not going to hold water either. On top of the fact that Stormy Daniels... Um, recanted her story. And the other thing about uh, Stormy Daniels, she was the one who was blackmailing Trump. Since when do you prosecute the blackmailer? You, I mean, or, or the victim of the blackmailer. You prosecute the person blackmailing. She's the blackmailer or the black mayor mistress. I don't know what you call a woman that does it. She's the extortionist. Trump is the victim in that entire story. He's been victimized by her and by his scummy ex-lawyer, Michael Cohen. So I don't even understand the, these cases. Very bizarre. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? This is J.J. from Mass. Hey, J.J. Good morning. Hey, J.J., what's up? Well, I'm, I'm looking at this uh, wonderful winning uh, from the, uh, the Judge Angry Moron and Letitia case yesterday, and I, I was just, um, I mean, it's definitely a big step in the right direction. And um, Indeed. They, I, I also, I, I just had to, I went out and looked at um, uh, some houses that were sold in Palm Beach just to, to see what things were going for, and you'll find this interesting. I found a, a four, four-and-a-half bedroom on a uh, lot size of uh, 7,405 square feet for $13.5 million. And you'll never guess what 7,405 feet equate into. It equates into 0.17 of an acre, mm -hmm. and it was thirteen point five million. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one seven. Trump has seventeen acres, so this property is one hundred times smaller. So all you do is multiply one hundred times thirteen point five million, and you get one billion three hundred and fifty million. I think that James and this moron judge should be charged with crimes against basic math. It's insanity. This is fraud. They should both be disbarred. And, and judges, judges can be removed from the bench. Steve and I, we were friends with a judge who was removed from the bench here in town. I mean, it happens. I mean, any, how can any Democrat, I would love any Democrat listening anywhere, to just go ahead and, and try to explain how Mar-a-Lago is worth $18 million and tell me that those it's up in New York are complete, total fraud. Well, you know, the, the other day, CNN screwed up. 
Okay, they were talking about the the uh, the bond, and they said, "Well, he could sell Mar-a-Lago for you know quarter of a billion dollars." Well, wait a minute. I thought CNN has been telling us it's only worth thirteen million. What 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 is it, CNN? I couldn't believe they were saying that. Oh, they they couldn't either. They couldn't either. The lady's like two hundred and fifty two twenty. Yeah. Yeah. For a quick sale, and that will cover. That was a quick sale, like a desperate sale, which means you're you're selling it for less than it's worth because you got to do it quick. It's crazy, and, and these, the thing that it, all of the media, even like Eric Sean yesterday from Fox, I saw him talking about this case and talking about eighteen million. But the, you know, the Trump wants to value this, and the yeah, is valuing at eighteen. How can you be? I mean, anybody that's got just. For a second, third grade education in simple math, how can Eric Sean or anybody on any newscast, I mean, forget, forget MSNBC and CNN. Those guys are gone, okay? Those jack wagons are toast. But, I mean, Fox has like a 50-50 maybe. But how can you just not hate yourself for being just... Because this, this is the thing. I was talking about this a couple weeks ago. Don Lamont, CNN paid him $12 million or something to fire him, right? They, that just to fire him, twelve million dollars. They overpay all these people on the news by a lot. Like uh, Brett Baer has a house he bought for over thirty million in Palm Beach, up the street from Mar a Lago, tiny little place in comparison. The reason they overpay them so much, they've all made deals with the devil. All right, I mean, I, I like Sean Hannity, but is he worth sixty million a year? No. You know, so so they they that's that's almost twice what Steve pays me here at, at the radio station. You know, I mean, my goodness, and I think I'm more than, you know, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, the thing, the thing about, the thing about, my, Mike, our board up says, I better get a raise. Um, the, the thing about it is this, okay? They, it, they're deals with the devil. The reason they pay them so much is so they can control them and they'll do whatever the hell they want them to do because they make so much more money than they're worth. Now, now look at this. This is the Drudge Report, right? Listen to this. Baltimore Bridge collapses after ship condition. No indication of terrorism in bright red letters. No indication of terrorism. Really, how can you determine that before any witnesses are, uh, have been interviewed by authorities or an investigation? See how quick they are to say it's not terrorism? Almost that right there almost leads me to believe... That it was! That it was. Exactly! Exactly! I, I'll never forget watching Shepard Smith on Fox after the Boston bombing telling me it was a, a power transformer. He says, you know, in, in, in Boston, a lot of people don't know this, but in Boston, the power transformers are not at the top of the power poles. They're at street level. And that looks, and they kept showing it over. That, lo it, that looks like a power transformer. Give me a break. We knew what it was. Yeah. The power transformers don't e e equate to a gigantic explosion with black smoke. And, and people losing limbs. Yeah. All right. Take care. Good to hear from you. Now, I want to tell you guys, if you're in pain, you need to call Dr. Philip Appleton. He's my chiropractor. He wants to be your chiropractic physician, too. And, you know, I, a, a listener contacted me the other day and said, does it work on sciatica? The laser wave pain treatment works on every kind of pain that I know of. Now, I'm not a doctor. I'm sure there's some pains that I don't know about. But this is a small list that I have here. And I, I used to go through a, a list all the time. And I Thought I was getting repetitive with that, but maybe I need to go to keep going through it. This is a this is a small, uh, capsulized version of my long list of things that the laser wave pain treatment works on: stenosis, neck pain, tennis elbow, tinnitus, strains and sprains, sciatica, muscular contraction, lumbar pain, herniated discs, hip pain, knee pain, bursitis, bronchial neuralgia, arthritis. You know the laser wave pain treatment is one hundred percent painless. Painless. There's no downtime, no injections, no drugs. Dr. Appleton uh, does all the treatments himself, not an assistant. And, you know, I thought I was getting special VIP treatment from Dr. Appleton. He's become a friend of mine. We talk, we're, you know, we're talking about different things. And he says, no, uh, I do all the treatments here, not an assistant. So everybody is a VIP with Dr. Philip Appleton. Uh, appointments are not necessary. Walk-ins are welcome, even on Saturdays. Is that amazing? And uh, appointments are never necessary because Dr. Appleton knows when you're in pain, you need help, you need relief, and you need it now. Here's his number, 954-973-0710. 954-973-0710.
954-973-0710. Online, AppletonCairo.com. Give Dr. Appleton a call. Talk to him about his laser away pain treatment and say bye-bye to your pain. All right. Now, you know, this thing about this uh, uh, bridge attack, I hope, I don't want it to be a terrorist attack. I'm not saying that it was, but I'm saying the media are trying to get a narrative going real quick that it wasn't. And, and the other two times that they did this was Fort Hood and the Boston Marathon, okay? And we know how that turned out. So it may not be one, but the media want to make sure that you don't think it is. Because if you do, you're going to want to shut down the border. And Biden has not completed uh, transporting everyone from Latin America into the United States of America, okay? He needs some more time. Trump's coming back in January. He's got limited time. We can't, they can't start closing down the border now, okay? So uh, nothing to see here. Just uh, power went out and things happened. I, I, you know, I, I, that's what they want you to believe. And maybe that's what happened. But, Steve, th there used to be a time when the media had some credibility. When there were times of crisis, okay, the, the media has always been liberal as, far, as long as I've been around. But in times of crisis, you could trust them. And now no one trusts the media. And you shouldn't. You, they should always be questioned. You know, we take, we take live calls here that are screenless. You can question Steve and I on anything we say uh, at any moment in time. Every day we're on the air. And the media should be held up to that same standard. If you can't be questioned, um, well, you're probably doing something that's wrong. And, and uh, y you don't come to a conclusion on a story before you go out and interview and investigate and do some, and, you know, real reporting. They've come to the conclusion before they've even been there and questioned anyone. Or there's even, I don't even know if there's been an NTSB press conference yet, but they've already determined nothing to see here. All right, that's all the time we have for today. We'll be back tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. I'm Brian Craig. Steve Kane, of course, has been here. This is Florida's longest running radio show, The Steve Kane Show, on the radio since 1977. We'll be back tomorrow. Take care. WSFS 104.3 HD. All right, guys, take care. Make sure you subscribe if you're new. And everyone who's already subbed, like the video. All right? I'll see you all. Later.